but um, it, it was just a joy in this day and age to walk into the office every day and know that I'm lucky I get to go in that gym and be with this, this group of kids. And that's probably what hurts the most right now is I know that that's over. And uh, man, I'm going to miss that. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Big D Energy right here on the Woodward Sports Network. My name is Neil Rule. We are back in effect. Sam Flannel in for DMAC. KG is in the house. Spencer Raxter is here. Um, anything happened this weekend? Ah, uh, you've got that uh, NCAA tournament glow about you, Neil. I wonder why. <laughs> No, it, it was. We got the full-on NCAA tournament experience. Uh, what a ride that was, <laughs> to say the least. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll certainly get into it. Jump into that WilwardSports.com chat thread. Get your thoughts in there. Get your opinions. All of it. March Madness, as we said, in full swing. And, uh, yes, it was uh, absolutely, absolutely wild. An absolutely wild ride. And some Michigan basketball oh, news yeah. as well. I'm excited about that. Are you? Oh, I'm very, very excited. How could you not be? Can't wait to hear it. Hey, I mean, I could, I could pontificate I, it now, or, or no? Or we we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, right. we'll get there. I figure yeah. that would be a little underwhelming for you, Michigan folk. But hey, we'll discuss it. We'll, we'll get there, no doubt about it. WoolworthSports.com chat thread. FJ1967. Good morning, Neil. Congrats to Oakland on a great season. Great memories. Great group of guys. Hope they hang out and play with each other uh, till spring graduation uh detroit dabber 313 keyworth missed you on saturday neil but congrats to oakland on their tournament run big fact. for sure it was fellas that was one of the more incredible experiences that you're ever going i mean the full gamut <laughs> of emotions and you know it's it's funny because i sent the tweet out the nca tournament is one of the more it's I think it's the best sporting pound for pound it's the best sporting event in the world like the Super Bowl is the best right yeah, mm-hmm. but, yeah but it's sure. like four hours yeah and then it's over the NCAA yeah. tournament goes on and on but Flannel what what was it like to watch that unfold because they they Oakland took over the nation <laughs> I mean, it was it was incredible. Obviously, beating Kentucky was the single greatest ac- sporting accomplishment in the history of of Oakland University, and it was it was amazing to watch. I mean, here's the reality of the situation when it comes to Oakland basketball right now: the university will never be th- be be the same. When you're a mid major school, the life of a mid mid major school, all that it takes is one victory like that, one shining and you're made. moment, one shining moment, and the same goes for a uh, Greg Campy. His legacy is. Completely completely validated now and set because he guided Oakland to that big tournament victory against Kentucky. It was it was absolutely incredible. And honestly, the uh, NC State game, I understand that it was a bit of a tough overtime loss, but everything was gravy. Just getting that one, that, that's the thing about being a mid-major team. It's very, very hard to make it to the tournament. As you know, you got to win that conference tournament no matter how well you play in the regular season. But once you get there, it's a free roll and you knocked out Kentucky. You knocked out Kentucky and John Calipari and uh, Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham and Antonio Reeves. I mean, come on. It was absolutely incredible to watch. It was honestly some of the most exciting tournament basketball I've seen lately, especially as a Michigan fan. <laughs> well, it's the only tournament basketball you saw fair, fair. this season as fair. a Michigan fan. So so let's get that out there right there. But uh, but no, as a matter of fact, we will be joined in studio by Jack Golke. Legend. Hey. American icon. Michigan legend. Yeah. NCAA <laughs> tournament legend. Mm-hmm. American legend. Mm-hmm. Damn right. He's got name, image, and likeness deals. With Buffalo Wild Wings, I saw all those. Yeah. I saw his Instagram popping off with all the different ads he's put. He up went there. from I forget exactly what number it was. Well, I'll ask him about this when he gets here. He went from something like fifteen hundred Instagram followers to nine thousand to fifty three thousand in like a, about three hours. Hell yeah, that's crazy. It was unbelievable. So yeah, he's got name, image, and likeness deals with Buffalo Wild Wings. Turbo uh, tax, Turbo tax yeah. Benny. We'll ask him about that. Yeah. We'll ask him his thoughts and how maybe you would be better served. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see if there's a fit, Spenny. Uh, <laughs> slipper company, well, Usos or whatever the slipper company Ooh, is. Barstool so. made merch for him. They're they're talking. Our guy John, you at Pro Sports Zones, talk about lining up an autograph signing for the man. Like what a time! It's it's wild. It's awesome. It is absolutely absolutely wild. 
Um, AD's four one one. Big bad Kentucky blue blood. Yeah. And doesn't that make it all that more special? I understand that when you're a lower seeded team like Oakland or even you saw it with like Maryland, Baltimore County with a Virginia and you saw it with Fairleigh Dickinson with Purdue, but there's levels to this. This is Kentucky. This was a team that had right now still two of the top five college prospects according to a tankathon on the uh, NBA draft big board. You got Antonio Reeves. You had three players who were higher rated recruits than Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham and little old Oakland took them down mm -hmm. led by legend Jack Golke and that's all it takes. His life is changed forever because of one spectacular performance in a tournament game and it was spectacular. Yeah and uh, as, as we talked about like Greg Campy did not sleep Thursday night because of all the yeah. media and everything yeah. that he had to do. And it was funny because I've done about 15, 15 talk shows across <laughs> the country. Uh, Vegas Sports and Information Network, about a half hour before tip-off on Saturday, I was on there talking to those guys. They were pretty cool. And it, it, was, it was absolutely wild. But the, but the one thing, Flannel, that I think might have gotten lost in all this and I'm glad you're here because you can you can break this thing down analytically. It wasn't like it wasn't it wasn't like it was a a comet that went across the sky. Oakland beat Kentucky in every metric. They out rebounded them. They had the lead for 28 minutes of the 40. They were better than Oakland flannel, or but, Oakland was better than Kentucky flannel. They just were. That's fair, but they as, were. As I said, though, you held. Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham to a combined three of 14 shooting and three of nine from three. Reed Shepard was a 50% three point shooter throughout the year. Rob uh, 53. Dillingham, 53. Rob Dillingham was, I believe, 44. They so, were the number one three point shooting team in the country, so, like by a half, by a percent, like by a lot. You're right to most extent, but still some things that were a bit of anomalies did have to happen. I mean, Jack Golke had always been a hell of a three-point shooter throughout the year, but his average was about 12.5 a game on 37% shooting. I mean, Jack Golke played the game of his life, and Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham Except played. Except there was a second time in a month he did that. In okay, but but he'd done that, what, twice all season? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking away from it. It's just that your guy, Jack Golke, literally outscored the combination of Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham, but what, like 32 to 15 or something like that. That's incredible. That's insane. And I learned a lesson, too, about all that. And I got to give a lot of credit to the Oakland coaching staff. They love the matchup. And I'll just, I come clean. Like, I'm honest. I'm like, you do? <laughs> and they're, they're, like, they're like, yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, we, we think that we can exploit them defensively. And they did. Yeah. Well, and honestly, I mean, I think everybody in this room would, would, would agree with this. If you would have told me that Antonio Reeves would play as well as he did, because he played great. He almost uh, brought Kentucky back and won that, won that game them, him, himself. And Oakland would have still won. I wouldn't have believed it, but it happened. So uh, Oakland University will never be the same. Greg Campy's life will never be the same. Jack Golke's life will never be the same. Trey Townsend, I mean, you could go on and go. on and on and on. Future Spartan. Hey, future Wolverine. Dusty May, get on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey. We'll see. Uh, WoolworthSports.com chat. And I am curious to get, like, the people's thoughts and, you know, any anything that you have out there. DNC ENT, shout out Oakland, played a huge role in the 1521 upset challenge. $5 every underdog, cost 180 bucks, cashed out 252 upping it to 100 next year. Um, You know, yeah, that's – there There was money to be made on that, I, I'm sure. Uh, here on Mark M., Tom Izzo said it's best for the game if mid-majors no longer get invited to the tournament and hand their bids to the Big Ten, SEC, and other power leagues. Uh, Douchebag take by Tom. And uh, That's not what so, he said. And, and that's why, because I got asked that before, and somebody mm -hmm. wanted me, in one of the interviews, they wanted me to speak to it. I'm like, I'm not comfortable because I didn't hear the quote. Yeah, he said the automatic bids for mid-majors shouldn't be a thing. So, like, if Oakland season... They deserved to get in there. They're the best team in the Horizon League all year. They won the most games, and they won the tournament. But if the last place team in the Horizon League wins the tournament and they get in the tournament, like they get in the NCAA tournament, that's what he was talking about. Like yeah, teams that deserve it, teams that were one of the best teams or the best team in their division all year and win their division, yeah, they should get no problem. But if 
I don't even know. What are, so, like, if NC State won their conference tournament, they shouldn't yeah, be allowed they, to go. And, and they have, like, seven wins, eight wins on the season, but they win their conference tournament, and they, they're gifted into the NCAA tournament. That's well, because, like, NC State wasn't going to get in. No. Yeah. And then they beat Kentucky – or, excuse me, then they beat Duke and Carolina and won five games in five days. I mean, maybe they, sh- maybe they should have been in. I don't know. Look – I know Greg Swanky, like the SEC commissioner, kind of piped in and, and talked about that as well. And, and guys, they already did this low-key with the NIT. And I know nobody talks about it, but they already washed the NIT. Whereas, like, for us, we want our, we want our regular season conference tournament, mm-hmm. which Campy's talked about it. It's so hard. Because look at it this way. There's, what, 33, 34 conferences? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, something mm-hmm. like that. 21 conference champions did not win their conference tournament. 21. It's hard as hell to do. Yeah, and when you're a school like Oakland, that's the only chance you have winning your conference tournament. But uh, thank goodness for all of us, especially you, Neil Rule. They did that, and then they went on to take down Kentucky in the NCAA tournament. But yeah, life of a mid-major, except if you become like a Gonzaga or, 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 or something like that, it's tough. And uh, that's why getting that one win does so much for just the profile of Oakland, for Greg Campy, for uh, Jack Golke, for Trey Townsend. Like I said, it's the the fact that it's so hard, the fact that Oakland had had a stretch where they played, where I think they won double-digit conference games, I think 10 times in the last 12 years, but didn't make the tournament. They finally make it. And then they get that win. It just makes it that much sweeter. But it also speaks to you can be one of the best teams in the Horizon League for a decade. And what is it? What is what do you have to show for it in terms of the tournament? But they did it. They well, got they that monkey up. No, their absolutely. But yeah. as we said, Jack Golke will join us here in studio. I, I, you know, I'll kind of break down the the experience. I do. The NCAA is involved. I'll just leave it like that. And there are some things, you know, some of the guys wanted me to bring up. So, so I certainly will do that as well. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot of a lot, a lot of uh, NCAA tournament. We got to get Spencer to spend mode to chime in about the Michigan State thing. But we were getting ready to go there in Pittsburgh, and I look up and State's winning like twenty seven fourteen. And then I look, and it's halftime, and it's 41-29 or something like that. i got to find out what happened. We'll yeah. get there, Spenny. All right, we'll get there. Tell them about Dispo, Sam. Yes. Visit Dispo Dispensary today for exclusive new deals and experience a team that curates an unbelievable atmosphere mixed with fresh inventory from Michigan's largest variety of products. Save the date for 420 at Dispo Dispensary. Dispo is putting on epic events at all locations. Stay tuned for more details. Dispo Dispensary, DispoShops.com, your local cannabis plug. Buying your first Feldman Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories, some big, some small. As she grows, you're not just buying her a Chevy, you're buying into a Feldman family. With more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation, Feldman just keeps rolling. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? (laughs) See what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. The best day of the year is almost here. It's my favorite day of the year. <laughs> the best holiday of the season. Opening day yes, sir. downtown, and we're going to be at the Grand Grand Slam Fest. It's going to be in the Detroit Opera House parking lot. If you want to see Prime Spenny in all my glory, you should come down and join us. It's so much fun. Friday, April 5th at 9 a.m. You can get your tickets at GrandSlamDetroit.com. Come in. Have fun with Woodward Sports. We're going to be broadcasting live from the tent. We're going to be partying in the tent all day. Come have a good time. Grand Slam Fest, Friday, April 5th, starting at 9 a.m. 
All right, we're off and running here. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Flannel in for DMAC. We have KG in the house. Of course, Spencer Raxter as well. All of you in the WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Uh, just kind of talking the NCAA tournament experience. Jack Golke will join us a couple minutes in front of noon here live in studio. America's hero, <laughs> national icon, national celebrity, uh, Jack Golke. And really a fun dude to talk to. As well. He's got sports takes, by the way. Like yeah, like he he said he wants to he'd like to do this someday too. Ooh, he said yeah. so. Hey, you know how could you how could you not like put his resume up at, up at the front when you're Jack Golke? That's the thing about life changing. Yeah, and, yeah. A, and a moment like that in the tournament, a game like that, his life will never be the same. And now, now the problem the problem is he's he's from Milwaukee, so he's a Packers fan. Ooh, and you know we. When we, because we actually, when we played at Green Bay, we ate dinner at Lambeau Field, like at the steakhouse at Lambeau Field. Yeah. So he and I got into it a little bit. Oh. It was, we were chirping. Okay. We were chirping a little bit. But no, nah, Jack's a great dude. We'll, uh, we'll sit here and we'll chop it up. Um, but yeah, uh, that guy, 62. OU dominated the paint in the game against Kentucky. Enough said. Oh, Mike G's on one today. <laughs> we're giving out participation trophies this a.m.? Uh, no, Mike, they're giving out millions of dollars, and we got three of them. Ooh, talk so about it. That's that's what they – no, there are no participation awards. Big games. You know what I'm saying? Michigan like, yeah. wouldn't have got one if they had them. What's that? Michigan wouldn't have got a participation trophy if they were giving them out. Though. No, they wouldn't, wouldn't have. got them the last two years. Did they get them last year? What, an NIT participation trophy? Well, those don't count. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, they, they, they shouldn't count for a program like Michigan. Yeah. Uh, what did Oakland win, Mike G asked? Well, $3 million. That's yeah. what they won. And, so, that. and they won a game against Kentucky. Put out a blue blood. Yep. They did. So there it is, yeah. And, it, you know, everything changed. Uh, just some of the fun facts. Uh, Oakland.edu, the website crashed Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, couldn't handle the traffic. Yeah. Uh, so that was out there. We sold over $8,000 worth of Oakland merchandise to yeah. Louisville, Kentucky zip codes. I wanted to know if that was true. I heard that. Yes, story. that that is true. And I, I love that That's stuff. That's awesome. I love that stuff, man. Yeah. Hey, what, what did I say at the beginning? The profile of Oakland University. I mean, it's going to get a bump just because of what happened in the NCAA tournament, as it should. It's the greatest sporting accomplishment in the history of the school, and we got to see it, and you, Neil Rule, got to call it. It's no, got to be a hell of an yeah. honor. Absolutely. It, it was a lot of fun. And I, by the way, too, I pre, and there were a lot of you out there in the WoolworthSports.com chat thread, uh, OB1V. Great calls, Neil. You were top notch. Th- thank you guys, too, because I know like a lot of you sought it out and listened and everything like that. And that whole thing was wild. Like people said it was all over the media here. Um, you know, you listen to a national sports show that night and the calls mm-hmm. all over the place. And yeah, that, that was. That was a lot of fun, too. And that's, like, for me personally, like, we talk about this basketball team and what they did for Oakland. Like, that's what that does for me. Like, that, whatever, wherever I go in my career, whatever's next or whatever happens, Oakland University, that moment, Mm -hmm. that will always be a part of it. And that is cool to be a part of. I don't care. Like, people want to downplay it. No, I don't downplay that. Like, it's cool to be a part of that. Oakland just busted your bracket. Yeah, that was yeah. I was on yeah. one. Everybody yeah, was that on was, one. That was a great final call of that yeah. uh, of that uh, Kentucky win. It was a it was like a, a nice mix of just being excited, being professional, but also getting in that Oakland just busted your bracket. I'm like, yep, that's Neil Rule. Gotta mm-hmm. love it. You are an elite play by play man, by the way, and showed out in the NCAA really? tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I'd have figured you'd have said, you know, I'm a very fine regional mid major, <laughs> very modest. Yeah, very, you know, <laughs> a good role player for the Pistons. You know, just kind of fill in, kind of a grind line kind of guy. Silly, what do I do? I have an overrated career, flannel. <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely not. Hey, I Absolutely. got the question of the day though: the Salmon jacket. Is it retired now? Or are you bringing it back out next year? You're framing it. What what is looking like with the Salmon um, jacket? It's und- It finished the season undefeated in regulation. It did. I want that out there. Uh, I love the way it fits. Mm-hmm. It leaves me it leaves me flexible enough to catch passes on the fly and stuff <laughs> like that. Um, so no, it's it's not retired. We're gonna leave it for big games, though. Okay. Let's just say it like that. Okay, yeah. I got you. It'll it'll be it'll be the big game jacket. So, um, but yeah, and and for you know like the Mike G's out there and stuff like that. That was the biggest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament from this metric flannel. Kentucky's men's basketball budget is twenty three point three million dollars. I might be like a point one or point two off. Twenty three million dollars men's basketball budget. Oakland's men's basketball budget is two million. 
That budget wise is the greatest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament. Mm. That's incredible, and that's why, in terms of of that, obviously the, the the numbers speak for themselves. But that's why I say what Oakland did. The fact that it was Kentucky, the fact that it has that budget, that they're a blue blood, they had the recruiting class, they have the NBA players is in some ways even more impressive than what UMBC did to uh, Virginia or what Fairleigh Dickinson did to Purdue. This is Kentucky. I know these were 16 seeds taking down ones, but in terms of the budget, the numbers speak for themselves. When you can see it tangibly that it is a fact, and what more can you say? Mike G said, Big D crapped on U of M during our run. I can be consistent. Okay, so you're telling me that Michi- the University of Michigan – and Oakland University should help should be held to the same athletic standard. That's what you right. believe. When, they when are we equivalent. get when we get about seventy million dollars yeah. less to work that, with. That's that's what he's saying. He's <laughs> saying Michigan Michigan's athletics and Oakland's athletics are the same thing in the pantheon of sports. That's what Mike G's saying right now. Well, I mean, that's why just getting to the tournament and winning a game. That's just. Uh, it, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, obviously, if they would have beat NC State, which they took them to overtime, by the way, that would have been won. phenomenal. Yeah. That would have been, I mean, Oakland in the Sweet 16. But all it really takes is them just getting that one tournament win. That's why, as you said, when it comes to the budget, that's why it is so huge. That's why it's such a huge story. That's why the profiles of the coaches and the players in the school are going to go up so much. Yeah. Tournament wins hit differently depending on the school and the budget and everything. And Oakland's, that's worth, I mean, that's worth its weight in gold. More, more so. Yeah. Woodwardsports.com chat thread. Uh, Giovanni Mosheri. It's a very fine upset for Oakland. Very hey. fine. <laughs> Shout out Jomo, man. Uh, Woodwardsports.com chat thread. Adiz411. I heard Neil Salmon jacket will be on display at the uh, Arena. They should. Frame should it. should it hang from the rafters? <laughs> it should be it should be framed as soon as you walk into the O. It should be right there, man. Yeah, like uh, like at the Henry Ford Museum or, <laughs> yeah, so, or yeah, something like or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it is, it's, it, it was a magical ride. Um, let's, uh, I, I do want to touch on this and, you know, we, we've talked about like budget stuff and all that kind yeah. of stuff. You guys want a little inside dirt on the, on the, on the NCAA tournament. Of course. of course. So this, this is what's pretty funny about it. When you go to a site, like the opening round site, there's, there's eight teams, there's two pods of four. Mm-hmm. They divvy up the hotels, and we'll see this here in Detroit coming up this weekend. What you got? What Purdue, Tennessee, Gonzaga, and who else is in there? Uh, Purdue, Creighton. Creighton, that's right. Yeah. Creighton, who we were in Pittsburgh with. Yeah. So they divvy up the hotels according to seed. So Creighton was the highest seed in our little pods over there. So they get first pick. Of room. So they get first pick of the wow. hotels. Ooh. <laughs> so they were at like the William Penn or whatever it yeah, was. I bet. <laughs> You know, and, and it, it kind of filters down. We were the second to lowest seed. I'm not going to say the name of where we stayed or anything Motel like that. Six. But it was not <laughs> it was not the William Penn. I will say it like that. Red roof in. Akron was technically the lowest seed. I think that they were at the Super 8 or something like that. Oh, I, wow. I don't know where. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, don't, I don't know. What, <laughs> but I, I want to say it like this. So we get into town Tuesday night. So we get we get set up and everything like that. I'm gonna go get you know go to go, go grab a drink. They got a couple of quality bourbon bars. I'm gonna go have some bourbon. So we went went to a, a bourbon bar in downtown Pittsburgh. When we walked there, we walked past the William Penn where Creighton's staying, right? You're right. And like, there's a lot of hills in Pittsburgh. So like, I'm walking up the hill and it takes you next to the hotel and there's like a ledge and you can stand on it. And I like look in. Like I press my face up against the glass and look into the William Penn, and I, I was waiting. I was waiting for like a security guard to come over and say, "Get out of here, right. you vagrant, you homeless vagrant, get out of here." And I had my face pressed up against it, and I saw like butlers, and I heard classical music, oh, and everyone's in a tuxedo, PM and I was player. shivering in the cold, you know, with a jacket that wasn't quite warm enough for. I was just shivering in the cold thinking about what it could be. Go back to your La Quinta. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Oakland, Oakland's Oakland alert, Oakland alert, yeah. get him out. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was there. Uh, only half of our shoes came the first day. Oh, wow. Then they weren't the right shoes. Oh, we'll just say it like that. <laughs> Oregon had all their shoes, though. Jesus. You know, Oregon did. They, did they, were, they were an 11 seed. I get it. it, it I get it. It's, it's, it's Oregon. But honestly, though, is it bad that I kind of like that the higher seeded teams get their first choice of hotels? Because what have I always said about the NCAA tournament in one of my, I would say, slight criticisms of why it's not the best way to decide a champion, although it's very, very exciting. 
When you're a higher seed, you don't even get a home game. You just get a region. So the fact that you at least get more comfortable uh, accommodations, at least in theory, I don't necessarily hate it. Reward them for, a re for, for their regular season. And Creighton had a hell of one. Uh, WoolworthSports.com chat thread Dante says uh, the NFL has approved the challenge rule where if an NFL team wins one of the two challenges, they get a third challenge. Also, let's go Detroit City FC. Damn you know what? And the hip drop tackle. What's that? And they banned the hip drop tackle. And they, and they banned the hip drop tackle. We'll get into that coming Weak. up uh, in, in, a, in a little bit. You know, I, I don't know, like the hip drop tackle, whatever. What, what's, what's hard about with the challenge rule? How about this? You get two challenges. And if you're right, it doesn't count against your two challenges. Why are you penalized for being right? Yeah. I never understood that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't even hate the idea of just not having a challenge limit. I mean, the, the, I, I get it that there's like pace of game and everything. And if everything was being challenged, it would eventually get to the point where it dragged on too much. But the idea is to get everything right. That's why reviews even exist in the first place. I mean, old school football, they didn't even have that. You've seen numerous examples and... I'm not going to get into all of them, but the Houston Oilers had one, for example. I believe it was in like the 1979 or 1980 AFC Championship where a touchdown that if they had review, it would have been called a touchdown was called incomplete. So the fact that review, the purpose is to get everything right, but if you're out of challenges, you're kind of effed. That's always, that, that has never sat that well with me personally. Uh, WoolworthSports.com chat thread. Uh, this is a good one. And man, I, I just lost it just now, so I can't credit I think it was, I don't know, I, I lost it. I can't correct. Rank, power rank these two things. My salmon jacket and Anthony Davis's jorts. Salmon jacket one, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Jorts number two? Yes. Jorts two. Yes. Okay. The, the jorts are always injured, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> except, well, he's, except he's going to play probably 75 to 80 games this year. No one's ever yeah. going to talk about that. Are you going to make the playoffs? Of course they're going to. They're, they're, they're comfortably in the, in the yeah. nine seed right now. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so th that's just kind of the inside bit of it. You know, you, yeah. they rank the hotels. You get to choose <laughs> ac you know, according to everything that's like that. Uh, on Thursday, this is a funny one too. So on Thursday, we're playing Kentucky. And I get to the arena. I get to set up. And they have like, you know, cards that are all printed up and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and they have like a, a row of radio. You know, I talked to you guys before about you know how the the finances of radio and how that works. So a row of all the radio broadcasters. I look, and that's set up according to seed as well. And so I look, and there's Oregon, and and there's Kentucky. You know, with their five chairs, with their five radio dudes that travel <laughs> that that you know come with the team to the arena. Everything's nicely printed up. I get to Oakland. In a Sharpie. Oh, wow. Oakland radio. <laughs> in Sharpie in handwriting that was worse than mine. So that just, that just lets you know the hierarchy of what it is. Yeah. And, you know, it, that's what makes it more special, too. That's the, uh, the uh, chip on the shoulder that Oakland needed. We're not going to be no Sharpie team anymore. No, yeah. right. absolutely. Let me right. tell you a company that always has a printed out resume card. That's Guardian Alarm because they're goaded. They're a one seed. Yes. Let Guardian Alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts. Our professional technicians take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. 24 7 professional monitoring. Call us anytime, day or night, and know that a Guardian team member will stay on. On the phone as long as needed technology backed by people your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and people have been proven to care call 1-800 stay out. out that's 1-800 stay, stay out guarding alarm your local security experts i love woodward sports love wearing clothes then you should be wearing woodward sports clothes check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com just click on shop we have all your favorite designs like dan campbell kneecaps woodward golf and of course our own logo out merchandise men women infants kids all love woodward sports impress your friends impress your boss impress your dog buy woodward sports merch today Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. 
The new glorious ice water bubble hash pre-roll now with diamonds, mm. constantly pushing to create the best cannabis experience. The perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure THC diamond dust allowing flour with only the highest terps making the best even better. Glorious Cannabis, check us out at your local retailer or GloriousCanna.com. Glorious. All right, keeping it pushing here. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Sam Flannel. We also have Spencer Rackstar in the house as always. And of course, KG as well. Be joined by Jack Golke, America's hey, hero, coming up right. in about 15 minutes or so. He'll be live in studio but, you know, just talking NCAA tournament, certainly Oakland's run. And I, I guess, Spenny, we do have to turn, you know, turn the tables here, mm -hmm. address your Michigan State Spartans. Yes. And, again, you know, just to kind of set it all up, they got a, a very, I thought, very nice win against Mississippi State. They were in charge and control of that game the, the entire time. And set up the game against North Carolina. I'm getting ready to go on the air. They're up like 27 to 14. Mm-hmm. I look up at the scoreboard after we start our pregame show, and it's halftime, and it's like 41-33. So, Spenny, I have to ask you, what happened? They fell apart. Uh, they fell apart. Okay. They started, they, yeah, uh, <laughs> they started turning the ball over. AJ, AJ Hogard played his worst game of the year by far. Really? Yeah, it was, it was a bad, bad performance on his part. Uh, they just couldn't get it done, man. They, they had a run where they got it within four, and then they missed two layups and let up two wide open three pointers and then it was there was no turning back from there. So it was an embarrassing performance. It was an embarrassing season. It was a complete failure of a mm. season for Tom Izzo and Michigan State Spartans. One of the biggest failures, the biggest abject failures of a season that I've experienced as as a Michigan State fan. And it's unacceptable. Completely unacceptable what they did, uh the effort they put in, in that last game. And I just feel bad for Tyson Walker because that's a guy that went out there for the past couple of years and was by far the best player on the roster every single game. And his teammates around him weren't putting weren't serious enough. They weren't bought in enough. They weren't ready to go. They weren't playing Michigan State basketball. It, it's exactly what it was. And it was embarrassing. And it was a complete failure. And they need to be held Izzo needs to be held accountable. The players need to be held accountable. And that is an unacceptable performance. Okay. Uh so Spenny, we we go with this and I'll ask you again. What's the, what's the solution? I mean, I, I, cause I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know what the solution is. And, and I have an idea of where you're going to go with that question, but it, it is. And, and look, you've been consistent about it. So I give you credit and you were, you were pounding the table, final four bus, mm -hmm. man, final four bus. You were pounding the table on it. You said five stars are in here. Let's go. And then, you know, for, for Michigan state, with the preseason ranked number four in the nation or something like that. And I guess, like, they they were never really that good. I don't think they were as bad as they looked at right. times as well. But in the end, that, that was about where they were at, right? They were a first-round win, mm -hmm. go up against a North Carolina, and as soon as Carolina turned on the Jets, like, that that was a wrap. But what, what do they do? What does the Michigan State program do? Because I feel as though, Spenny... They are kind of caught. They are kind of caught in a vortex a little bit yeah. right now because you're getting the recruits right mm -hmm. on paper. You're getting the recruits. You have the talent. So what do you do? If they want to have success, Izzo needs to get over himself. Ooh, he needs to get over himself. He and and, to, and and let me just cut you off right there. But you're not saying fire him. No, you're you're not saying. I want I want to make that clear to everybody. Yeah, no, you're not, not saying, saying that. that. He needs to get out of his ways. He needs to play the freshmen, to play the five stars, and he needs to attack the transfer portal. You look at what happened when Xavier Booker actually got minutes in this tournament. He was the best big man on the floor for Michigan State by far. And, like, you you got a five star, use the fucking five star. There's no reason he should be sitting on the bench all year. You can't look at me and tell me that Matty Sissoko was a better option than Xavier Booker for 95% of the season. It's just not true. And you look at the best player on this team the past couple years has been Tyson Walker. Where'd you get Tyson Walker? Out of the transfer portal. Maybe do that again. Maybe go out there and get some guys. You don't think Michigan State can get transfer portal guys to come in here from teams? Like, come on. That's what you got to do. That is how college basketball works now. And if you're not going to do that, you're going to continue to live in mediocrity and continue to be subpar and fail to reach expectations. So Izzo needs to take a long look at the way he addresses five-star freshmen and the transfer portal. And Flannel, as, as a Mich the resident Michigan guy here, 
What's what's your what's your interpretation of what you see with Michigan State? Well, okay, so coming into the year, they had all the expectations. They were the number four ranked team. You had four starters, if you want to even count Maddie, like your entire starting lineup coming back. You had Akins, you had Hogard, you had Tyson Walker, you had Malik Hall. You had the number five recruiting class in the big, it, it, the number five recruiting class in the nation, the number one recruiting class in the Big Ten. You had some nice uh, perceived depth pieces like Jackson Kohler and Carson Cooper and Trey Holloman. But the reality is, the only two players that had good seasons, objectively good seasons for Michigan, were Tyson Walker and Malik Hall. Mm -hmm. A.J. Hogard had a disappointing season. Jaden Akins lost himself some money. Yes. He got it back. He might have gotten it back with that first round performance against Mississippi State, but the totality of the year, his field goal percentage and his three-point percentage went down. Xavier Booker, here, I'll, I'll, I'll really crystallize this. Michigan State had the number one rated re recruiting class in the Big Ten. None of the three prize recruits, Jeremy fears it wasn't his fault, but the other two, none of them were even freshmen all Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Carson Cooper was disappointing. Jackson Kohler, he was hurt for a bit, but he was disappointing. Maddie Sissoko is Maddie Sissoko, which in and of itself, besides for the Mississippi State game, weirdly, is disappointing. Trey Holloman, I guess you could say, was a bright spot, but nobody really stepped up. It was a team that was supposed to be by definitely the most talented in the Big Ten, was supposed to win the Big Ten, was supposed to maybe even be competing for like a one seed or a two seed or a three seed. But when you look at what they accomplished in the regular season, what happened to them in the tournament is about where they should be. They got a favorable matchup against Mississippi State and they dominated them. But then they went up against North Carolina and kept it close for a while, but ultimately North Carolina pulled away. It was definitely the most... It was the most disappointing season in the Tom Izzo era since I actually found out there was another one I looked back to, which was comparable 2010, 2011, which returned senior Darrell Summers, senior uh, Kalen Lucas, junior Draymond Green had Adrian Payne and Keith Appling as incoming recruits and went one and done in the tournament and 500 in conference play. That's basically what you got from this year's Michigan State team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two and done instead of one and done 500 in conference play, just an extremely disappointing season. Yeah, it's it is. It's it's interesting to me. Uh this comes from uh this comes from Miki says Izzo needs to lie in the weeds and do what must be done. Ask yes. Har ask Harbaugh. Spenny is right. Pay the players what they're worth, use the five stars and attack the portal. Either do this win. or go the way of D'Antonio. Yeah. A thousand mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. That is exactly what happened with Mark D'Antonio. Mark D'Antonio, the best best football coach in college history. In our college history. At Michigan State, <laughs> yeah. yeah. About the, <laughs> the best football coach in the college's history. Yes. He went out because he was stuck in his ways, because he kept his friends as yeah. the coaches, because he kept trying to do the, I'll grab three stars and two stars and turn them into all Big Ten. And it was working for a while, but, like, at some point, like, how many times do we got to teach you this lesson, old man? And, mm -hmm. like, I love Coach D D'Antonio. I love Coach Izzo. Those are the two pillars of my school's athletic programs. But, like... At some point, you know, the game passes you. Yeah. You got to adapt to survive. And if you don't adapt, you're going to be left in the dark. And we saw it happen with Mark D'Antonio, and we're seeing it happen with Izzo. Well, and the thing about Izzo, too, is this isn't the first season. This is the fourth consecutive year for Michigan State with at least 13 losses. The difference was this was the year where it was supposed to be different because the previous three years, they were preseason unranked, unranked, and 13. This year, they were fourth. This year, they had the uh, recruiting class that they hadn't had in many, many years. They had the, uh, I would say, NBA talent, or at least perceived. And it just, it was a highly disappointing season. And the thing is, Xavier Booker, he played nine minutes per game. Yes. And if you want to chalk that up to him not being ready, okay. But also, if you want to chalk that up to, like, people in front of him were better, look how the season went. Mm -hmm. Look how the season went. I mean, you had Matty Sissoko, Carson Cooper, and Jackson Kohler. You're telling me that Xavier Booker can't can't crack that rotation more than nine minutes a game. The the Matty Sissoko thing was is incredible to me because whenever we played Michigan State, he popped off like pretty much every single time. Matty yeah. Sissoko. So when he played us and when he played Kentucky, yeah. ironically enough, or Gonzaga, Gonzaga. or Gonzaga, yeah. he would pop off. And, and I would hear you, Spenny, and, and Flannel and Michigan State fans talk about it and say, you know, when, poking him with the stick, when are you going to do something? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, every time I see this guy, he's dominant. Like, what? I and couldn't. Then, and then he has two rebounds against Wisconsin. Yeah. And it's like, you, like, I don't know it either. Ramadan Sissoko had an amazing first game in, in the tournament, and he wasn't bad. I, w I won't say he was bad in the, in the game against USC, but everybody was bad in the second half. But 
it's yeah it, it, he's inconsistent if you take all three of the big men <laughs> of michigan state and put their powers together they'll make one of the best big men in college <laughs> basketball like if you take carson cooper's defense jackson kohler's offense and maddie sissoko's size and athleticism and put them into one person it'll be the best big man in the country. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you can't do that but you can't do it yeah. isn't it the weirdest thing that when he sees oscar shibwe or drew timmy he just sees he like gets that like lebron look before uh before that uh, game six of the boston that like famous stare down or yeah, even yeah. in that uh, mississippi state game i mean he had nine rebounds mm -hmm. It's just he has no offensive game whatsoever. And but, I will say, um, yeah. Izzo did come out and say this, that he's he's going for a deeper run in the tournament or he's going to die trying. It's like, well, he's like oh, 50 Cent. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or die trying. Get rich or die trying. Yeah, <laughs> Lord, that's hilarious. But he's a 50 Cent of, coll of college basketball. Need, Tom, you know. Yeah. That's what we need, Tom. We're a borderline blue blood. You got to go out there and make it past the first weekend, yeah. at least more than once in four years. I mean, but you kind of, I, I honestly think, though, and I get it, 2020, that probably would have been a magical tournament run, or not even magical. They were, they were, I don't remember what seed they would have gotten, but uh, they were, they were looking to be a team that was one of the favorites. But yep. with what, what they've Rip. done, with what they've done lately in Big Ten play, losing 13 or more games four consecutive years, not making any tournament runs. They've, I think they've even lost their status as a borderline blue blood. I think you could argue that in like the late 90s, early 2000s, they were trending towards becoming one, and they made a couple of a Final Four runs, I believe in 09, 05. And, yeah. and, and Flannel, like, I, I think you might be being a little dis... Like, they had, a, they had a, every recruiting class for two decades made a Final Four. But however, with that being said... You know, it's getting to be in the rearview mirror a little yeah. bit now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's my point. This is the worst yeah. stretch of the Izzo era. And what's not in the rearview mirror, and what's not a bad thing, Michigan State Hockey, Big Ten yeah. Tournament Champions for the first time in school history. They won in overtime. You're hockey school now. Hockey school now, for sure. <laughs> Patrick Geary with the game winner in overtime. And guess who was named Big Ten Tournament Most Outstanding Player? Justin Applicator? Red Wings prospect Trey Augustine. There is a nice silver Freshman lining. goalie who was arguably the best goalie in the country this year as a freshman, and he's a Red Wing. So shout out to the boy. I know we're not going to take a segment to talk about college hockey because nobody cares about it, but shout out. I watched that game. It was an electric game. Michigan tied it up in the third period at four, and then they went into overtime and were battling, and Michigan State got the game winner. Patrick Geary from the blue line put it top chatter. It was a nice goal. But shout out to the boys. Shout out. First, first uh, Big Ten tournament in hockey in – school history so is mun so. buzzing again Muzz, mun is buzzing I, i've i've been to both i've been to mun and to yost and i'm just saying mun's better my dad even said it was better so I'm just saying, and he's a michigan fan so there you have that i know you also your dad's a fan of seafood fest and yes. big boy how can you not be that's right catch it while you can dive into the fish and chips the new parmesan crusted cod perfectly fried clam strip platter or a delicious fish sandwich a big boy must try the new mango iced tea the ultimate compliment to the popcorn shrimp the shrimp alfredo or the shrimp stir fry every day is a fish fry at big boy and don't forget every friday night the all you can eat seafood buffet the raxter family they're buzzing mm -hmm. they're buzzing they're in there get to your local big boy today into any Lady Jane's haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's haircut for men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. 
Tired of that same old Detroit sports wearable stuff? We got you covered. Woodwardsports.com slash shop. That's right, everybody. Get that Stoke Not Scared t-shirt. It's still hoodie season. It's still beanie season because it's never going to be warm again, I guess. We're getting snowstorms and everything like that, so get geared up for that. And, of course, I'm always going to mention it. The Spencer Raxter-inspired Jack Campbell meat missile shirt is out there as well. Woodwardsports.com slash shop. The very best in Detroit sports wearables. Back at it, Big D Energy on a Monday. Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Sam Flannel in for DMAC. We got KG, we got Spencer Raxter as well. Jack Golke, America's hero, will join us in studio coming up in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, there was some, some news uh, with Michigan basketball as well. They hired Florida Atlantic coach Dusty May. And, you know, look, and I know Mike G's been chirping in the chat and stuff like that, and talked about you know Michigan hate and stuff like that and and it's funny to me Mike G and I'm going to tie this together because I believe it is one and the same and it's example of the the problem I've had with Michigan where look should Jawan Howard have been fired yeah obviously he should have but at the same time Mike G let me remind you of this because you're giving me crap about Michigan football hate I was the one that was right about Michigan football where Jim Harbaugh said you know what I don't care about what this university's, you know, mode is or credo or anything like that. I'm going to do what's necessary to go win a national championship. And he did. And whether it was, you know, illegal contacts with recruits, so what? You guys know how I stand on that. Mm-hmm. I love it. Because what what's the penalty for it? You don't have to coach against Hawaii? Like that's, you know, that's, I, why would you not do that? So 100% I'm on board, and guess what? It worked. You know how I know? I watched them get handed a national championship trophy. I watched it. It happened. They won. Juwan Howard tried to do things along those same lines where he had the best backcourt in the nation, signed, sealed, and delivered, handed to Michigan with Terrence Shannon and Caleb Love, the Pac-12 player of the year. Mm -hmm. Terrence Shannon, the one guy who could stop Jack Golke, by the way, in America – the only guy that could, you would have had the best backcourt in America. And the university was like, ah, oh, we can't take some of these credits. Can't take some of these credits. Yeah. Are you kidding me with that? That's absurd. But it just goes to show you. That's what you have to do with what with what Spencer said about Michigan State, with what you have to do to win in college athletics today. That's what you have to do. Quote, go get in the weeds, push the gray area, take your suspension. Take a second suspension all in the same season. Doesn't matter. You want a chip. Nothing's going to take that away. They might On paper, they might take it away or whatever, but so what? We all it. saw it. You guys all lived it. You went out there and traveled for it. And I give credit to Jim Harbaugh for that. And so I guess backing that up. You know, You've been jo- consistent on that. Yeah, and Jawan Howard didn't get the same liberty. And Flannel, I, I know that – I know you get upset about that, but it's true, no, and you can't deny that. So – I've, I've, I've done some thinking, and obviously when you watch the NCAA tournament, you see Caleb Love is still playing with Arizona. He was Pac-12 mm-hmm. Player of the Year. Terrence Shannon might be the tournament MVP if you gave that award right now, at, and they're at the Sweet 16. They're having the best season Illinois has had since uh, that year where they they've, they've made their first Sweet 16 since 2005. I will 100% give you that. My issue with Juwan Howard was more, it's, well, I'll, I'll go to last year first. You had the talent on this team, I believe to at least be, I don't know, a borderline bubble team. But instead, you had the worst season in your school's history. The previous year, you had two top t- top 15 picks and Hunter Dickinson, and you couldn't even make the tournament with that. So I get it. He could have had more reinforcements, and he should have had more reinforcements. But that doesn't give you an excuse to put together the last two putrid seasons with the, with, with the school. So both things can be true. You should have got Terrence Shannon and Caleb Love, but Juwan Howard deserved to be, you know, launched out of a cannon, which he was. Credit to Ward Manuel and the uh, School of Michigan, by the way. And now Michigan has their head coach and one Dusty May. That's uh, that, uh, that's pretty pretty exciting hire, at, at least at least for me. I'm yeah. excited about it. No, and and look, I I uh, as you guys know, I go to South Florida a lot. Got some friends down there. Got a got a friend that's. Uh, Florida Atlantic alum, as a matter of fact, season ticket holder for basketball also. And, you know, it's I, – I texted him, and uh, he uh, he responded. He's like, look, we all knew this that this was coming. 
Uh, it was just a matter of time this season or next. He still had his guys. I uh, still had his guys that were going to be back for one more year. And I uh, said, seems to get the best out of the kids he had. I uh, got them playing as a team, obviously found uh, their big guy, their big seven-footer, Vlad, as yep. a transfer, and a couple of fringe guards like Greenlee from Minnesota and, and Gaffney from UConn. So, but that's the uh, – like when you talk about mid-majors that make a run, that's the other side of the transfer portal that people don't talk about. There's bounce-back dudes that come the other sure. way that find a slot and play, and play well and, and get you to a Final Four. Uh, needs to work on the end-of-game stuff. No way Nelly should have did what he did. He doesn't like end-of-game timeouts, though. Uh, just seems to be a great motivator, kind of guy moms would want their coaching their kid. He's firm but fair. He can be stubborn at times, never strayed much from his man-to-man defense, never playing two big guys. It hurt us at times against bigger teams. But he took Florida Atlantic, which, you know, I always thought every time I go down there, I'm like, Florida Atlantic should be it, man. Like, you're right there on the beach and everything like that. But the basketball team was never – it were just regular old middle-of-the-road, mid-major college basketball team. That's what they were. That's the thing. They weren't it. And he took them to a Final Four. Until Dusty May got there. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because did he maybe mismanage the end of the Northwestern loss? Sure. I'm not going to argue with that. Was the final a final four at, at Florida Atlantic, by the way, run maybe a little bit fluky and a, a, a very poorly timed Memphis turnover in the first round kind of gifted Florida Atlantic a win. And then in the second round, you got to play fairly Dickinson. Thanks, Purdue, by the way. But here's what I do know about Dusty May, and here's why I'm excited about him. Prior to Dusty May's hiring at Florida Atlantic, Florida Atlantic had suffered seven consecutive losing seasons. In six seasons with Florida Atlantic, Dusty May had a winning record every single year. Prior to Dusty May's hiring, this is the second thing, FAU had been a D1 basketball program for 25 seasons. They had seven head coaches and one tournament appearance. Hmm. In Dusty May's six seasons, they had two. Third and most important, Dusty May guided FAU to a fucking Final Four. <laughs> Dusty May has a Final Four as a head coach. You know who doesn't have one? Sean Miller of Arizona and Xavier. Gene Cady and Matt Painter, although Matt Painter is still pending. Nate Oates still doesn't have one, but again, that's still pending. And you know who else doesn't have one? Jamie Dixon, arguably the best coach in Pitt history. They all don't have one. So now Nate, um, Nate Oates, um, Dusty May has the same number, number of Final Fours as Shaka Smart, Bruce Pearl, Rick Barnes, Dan Hurley, Tom Crean, Scott Drew, Tony Bennett, Mick Cronin, Dana Altman, Jim Valvano, Bruce Weber, Toby right, Smith, land the plane, Judd man. Heathcote, Chris Beard. <laughs> my point is that, here's, here's my point. With Juwan Howard, one of the questions about him going in was that he'd never been a head coach. He'd never built a program. Yeah. John Beeline, Michigan's enormously successful head coach, had built Kansius into a tournament team, Richmond into a tournament team, and had guided... You mean Canisius? Or, or is it Canisius? <laughs> or whatever, 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 whatever. I don't even know how to pronounce a name. I, I, That's I, how I, impressive it is. And also had had a ton of success at West Virginia. Michigan was the fourth team he'd taken to the NCAA tournament. And Dusty May guided FAU from the ashes of irrelevance, of irrelevancy at FAU to guide them to a Final Four. And just one other quick thing on Dusty May, which I think is important. One of the calling cards for Juwan Howard coached basketball teams at Michigan, and it really reared its ugly head this year and last year. Juwan Howard's winning percentage in games decided by six points or less at Michigan, 33. Dusty May's at Florida Atlantic, 52. You saw last year how Michigan lost 16 games, 12 of them by, by a six points or less. This season, when Michigan still had a chance, their first nine losses were six of them were, were by six points or less. And oh, by the way, the Michigan State game at home, which wasn't technically six points or less, Damn they were no. tied. Damn right it wasn't six points or less. They were tied <laughs> with, with, with seven minutes left to go, and Michigan State outscored them 10 to nothing the rest of the game. Uh, the Rutgers game. That's how you finish a game, Flannel. Hey, and that's how you don't finish a game <laughs> if, 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 if you're Michigan. The Rutgers game, they had a 15-point second-half lead and lost by 10. So those are a couple other games in which uh, down the stretch, Michigan just absolutely failed. And one last thing on Dusty May. I know I'm being a little bit long-winded. But yes, I'm, you are. But I'm the Michigan fan. <laughs> I'm the Michigan fan in the room. I got something to be excited about after this miserable basketball season. Michigan needs to replenish the roster. Yeah. You're losing Doug McDaniel to the transfer portal. You're losing Terrace Reed. Well, you the last guy had Terrence Shannon and Caleb Love delivered. Yeah. And hold the on. university wouldn't let him in. Hold on, though. Hold, hold, hold I'll, on. I'll never get past that. Flannel. That's fine, but that's what's done is done. I don't like it either, but what, what's done is done. Olivia Kamoa has no eligibility left, so you're losing 
three players that were last year played well to some extent and were expected to be uh, contributors moving forward. And oh, by the way, there are one recruit from last year, George Washington III, when he's not busy being our first president's grandson, is also leaving. See what I just did there? But, I do. But uh, Florida Atlantic, the great thing about this team is that you have three potential graduate transfers with a year of eligibility left. Wink, wink. You got Vlad Golden. You've got uh, Janelle Davis, who was your team's leader in points and assists. Vlad Golden was the seven-foot center who led the team in rebounds and blocks and averaged 16 a game. You got Elijah Martin, who led mm. the team in steals and averaged 13 points per game. Maybe Dusty May brings his guys with him, guys who already graduated, so the admissions thing shouldn't be as much of an issue. I'm excited as hell. I mean, I, I probably feel the way that you felt, Spenny, about the whole Jonathan Smith thing. You had nothing to celebrate during the football season, but Jonathan Smith looks like a good hire. That's how I feel about Dusty May. Nothing to celebrate during this basketball season. Absolutely miserable. But Dusty May, there's evidence of him building a program from being better in late in like late game and close game situations, and you might even be able to replenish the roster more sooner than you think. Yeah, I'm happy about it. I'm just worried about the fit with him and Ward Manuel. That's all. Um, will well, that's a default. You have to worry about yeah, that. Will you he absolutely allow do. him to utilize NIL and, and different things of that nature to help bring recruits in? Like, how is it going to work? Well, Dusty May's going to have to worry about who's going to be his insurance provider when he gets here. Hey, but, you but, got any suggestions for him? I mean, Dusty May should choose Swiss. How could you not? Let's get Dusty May on the show, by the way. Good news and bad news. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Swiss will make sure your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com. Tell them Woodward Sports sent you or give them a call at 248-800-4177. Again, that is 248-800-4177, Swiss Insurance. America's here. Jack Golke coming up Where's next. the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. What's going on, everybody? Neil Rule for Jack Labrador, the new car game that is sweeping the nation. And guess what? You can learn to play on your phone right now. Go to jacklabrador.gg. Two new symbols in a franchise-changing three-point play. Once you go, Jack, you never go back. It is Jack Labrador, the car game that's sweeping the nation. Our number two, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Sam Flannel, KG in the house, Spencer Raxter. And right now, as promised, we are joined by America's hero, the everybody. I, I think that is safe to say he take he took the NCAA tournament by storm. Of course, he is none other than Golden Grizzlies guard, tournament champion, hero, whatever you want to say. He is absolutely that. Jack Golke, our guest. Jack, what's going on, man? How are you? Uh, things are great, man. Thanks for having me on, Neil. I'm excited to be here with Woodward Sports and uh, just excited to chop it up with you guys. No, absolutely. I, you and I have a lot of debates yep. in airplanes and buses <laughs> all across the country we got into a good one at lambeau field that's right we'll talk about that later though all right man <laughs> so we we got to ask you um i was there i saw some of it firsthand N not the game itself that the time after that 24 hours after the game what was that like for you dude it was absolute whirlwind whirlwind's the best word i can use to describe it just so many things coming at me from different directions like i think I slept like three, four hours. I was probably on my phone for 12 plus hours that day, which is like triple what I'm normally like. It was crazy, dude. Just constant attention and nothing I've ever experienced before just to turn into an overnight sensation like that. I, I still haven't really grasped it. And 
people tell me like you're famous like that's that doesn't seem true i don't i don't think that's true <laughs> <laughs> no but the reality is jack and, and here's the thing i work with uh the nature of the job i do which i'm very grateful for is that i uh, get to hang out with former professional athletes every single day I'm like legitimately kind of starstruck by you, man. <laughs> you are a tournament legend for life. Yeah. How does that actually, do you even like grasp that or how does it feel? Uh, well, I mean, I appreciate you saying that. I, I can't say I really grasp it yet. Like I, I coming off the floor, we were, we were like, we just won a huge game. We want, we beat Kentucky. It felt like a massive win, but it didn't, it didn't feel like the whole country was watching. It felt like the city of Pittsburgh in that arena was mm. watching and we showed them something. But then, yeah, like once once you get off and you see all the messages, you see all the tweets, the memes, all that stuff going around, it kind of started to register like, geez, all these people really know who Oakland is and, and know who I am. And, and it's really cool, but uh, I'm not sure, like, just going around, am I going to have to take pictures everywhere I go? I guess, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> no, but, but you did that, though. And one of the things that really stuck out to me, Jack, was the people put a video, the line of people that want to take pictures of you after, after we won that game. I mean, it was all the way up the first level, uh, like yeah. the st and people were just kind of coming down and taking pictures. You stood there the entire, you took every single picture. Yeah. Like to the, I mean, hundreds, yeah. literally hundreds of pictures. I mean, but that's the way you are though, like as a dude, you know, like you're just a regular, you know, yeah. you're a regular yeah. old guy. You and I, you know, chop it up a lot about sports and stuff like that. You like the people, don't you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I just, yeah, want to show them support and appreciation because, like like we were saying this whole thing's just been crazy and and uh i'm just a normal guy and i mean if if kids are going to come up to me and ask for a picture like and that's going to make their day i'm more than happy to do that like i know when i was a kid i had a ton of athletes that i looked up to and and uh if i was able to see them and get a picture with them that would have been something super cool for me so i mean i don't feel like i'm that guy <laughs> yeah and maybe if other people are saying i am like that's really cool but if i can help out kids or, or do whatever it is i'll definitely take time out of my day to do that i just want to make sure people appreciate it all right um i do want to get into the game a little bit both the games yep. actually i do want to get into those uh but before we who was the coolest person that reached out to you directly coolest well obviously jj watt was really cool yeah I, i've known him though a little bit just being from pewaukee uh the coolest thing for me was was the scott van pelt that, on that was Sports really Center. sweet SVP. to be on SVP with him and and have him talk just chopping it up with him and with Coach Campy. That was that was really awesome. Uh, you did the Pat McAfee show Pat as McAfee. well. Yeah, that was really cool. I felt like I gave it back to him a little bit, pretty good. So uh, people were saying they enjoyed that. All all the interviews were were super cool and uh, just to be able to talk to people like that who who I've always watched their shows and things like that. Yeah, really awesome experience. All right, Spenny's got one for you. Yeah, it's not about taxes, but uh, Jack, <laughs> we'll, appreciate we'll get you there. joining the show. And on top of having one of the most iconic performances in tournament history, you have one of the most iconic lines in tournament history yes, after sir. the game when you said we are not a cinderella and like i'm a i'm an msu alum i'm an msu fan but okay. i was rooting for you guys so hard when you dropped that i was like let's fucking go <laughs> hell yeah how did that come to you did was it just spur of the moment or were you practicing that like Neil was practicing the call <laughs> no i wasn't practicing it um going into the game i, I was always thinking like we we got to come into it with an attitude that we're not the underdog. We're we're confident going into it, and either team can win that type of thing. Because you can't really approach a game and go into it thinking, oh, I hope we have a 25 percent or a 15 percent chance to win this game. You can't listen to odds makers. Mm -hmm. uh, so going into it as a team, we knew we knew we had a great shot. I personally was going into it thinking it's if it's a loss, I'm going to be disappointed. So I, I was going into it with that attitude of a win. But once we got into that post game interview. Uh, I was just excited. I was I was feeling myself a little bit, and yeah, I grabbed the mic, said we're not a Cinderella, and obviously the next game didn't go as planned, but I still stand by it. That uh, that NC State game was was down to the wire, could have gone either way, and uh, obviously if we're in the Sweet 16, I think that story would have been that much better. But yeah, I, I stand by it. We're not a Cinderella. Uh, joined by Jack Golke here, Big D Energy Woodward Sports Network, incredible performance against Kentucky. Followed that up, made six threes against NC State as well. But we'll talk about the games coming up in just a couple of minutes. But, Jack, I have to, I have to get a power ranking from you here <laughs> of, all, of all the cool stuff. Um, originally, I had a power ranking list for you. But all this, all this cool stuff that's happened to you. But let me ask you this. Antonio Brown named you, quote, <laughs> the cracker of the day, unquote. <laughs> you talked about that with Pat McAfee. Where does that rank? That's got to be pretty cool, right? Yeah, I would say that was... 
it's real close up towards the top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially like I didn't know. I, AV's Twitter's just been going crazy lately. I yeah. mean, you've all seen it. And one of my teammates, uh, Baru, he loves Antonio Brown's Twitter. So as soon as he saw that, that me being cracker of the day, I think made his year. <laughs> so, so that was really cool. And, and to do that on the McAfee show and, and bring that up and have them just laughing about that. Yeah, that was, that was definitely a cool moment, man. Jack, I got to get into the Kentucky game a little bit more because it was such an incredible win. And, you know, Kentucky is an incredibly talented team. As yeah. you know, you, you, uh, you played against them. They've got guys like Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham who you're going to be seeing on NBA floors next year making an impact. They're going to probably both get drafted in the top five. How does it feel that you by yourself outscored both of them in that game 32-13? <laughs> to 13? That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels – obviously feels good, but uh... – Maybe if they could slide me some of those NBA contracts they'll be signing, that, that would be nice. Yeah, right. But, uh, no, I mean, it was just awesome. I, I, it just comes down to, uh, I think I put in the preparation, I put in the time, and, and was, was able to seize that opportunity. Those opportunities like that where you're playing Kentucky on national TV in the tournament, I mean, that's once in a lifetime for me, and hopefully my teammates can do it again next year, but you don't get those opportunities very often. So just had to go out there and seize it and – I'm glad that uh, we played well defensively as well to kind of slow those guys down. Obviously, they're terrific players, but just try to get in the zone as soon as that game started, and, and everyone did a great job feeding me the ball, realized that it was going to be my night, and from there, we kind of just took off. Uh, WoolworthSports.com chat thread, IT Hip says, uh, we love you, Jack. Amazing run. <laughs> uh, John Effing Lore, Golkey, Golkey, Golkey. A lot of Golkey uh, in there as well. Um, the, the the name, image, and likeness deals that just came pouring. You have the Buffalo Wild Wings hat right there, yes, as, as as a matter as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Um, but yeah, so so you have that uh, one that's in particular of interest to to somebody in this studio as well. Uh, Spencer Raxter has been, uh, you know, he's lamented about his tax issues. Um, you know, maybe maybe in the future, <laughs> like TurboTax could help him out, perhaps. I, I mean, I think if you uh, go to my Twitter, there's a little little link in there. Just click that, go to TurboTax, and they'll get you right. I'm telling you, it'll be quick and easy. All See, right. you were doing it wrong, <laughs> Spenny. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, hey, I can't argue with that. <laughs> so, so Jack Olke creates some of the biggest moments in Oakland University history, and he helps you with your tax problem. Nah, that's American <laughs> Hero, Father. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying, man. That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, Jack Olke, our guest here. Um, the not a Cinderella thing. And this is something, Jack, like, here's how I know what your day was like. Because I, I got hit up by like 15 or 20 stations. It was, I mean, it was insane, you know, the, the buzz and the drama and, and all that stuff that you created. But the game itself on the floor, you said we're not a Cinderella. And it was something that I talked about whenever I did interviews or talked to people about the game. Look at, look at any measurable rebounds. Oakland was better. 28 minutes with the lead. Shoot, shooting the basketball. Oakland was better. You know, obviously shooting from three as well. The only issue you guys seemed to have in the game was free throws, but you're able to survive it and, and advance. You guys were better. You were the better team. I mean, oh. any way you want to look at it. And you coming into that game, it's almost and, – and you've had this really the entire time I've known. You have like an ira almost irrational confidence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean – to be honest, especially as like a, a shooter in particular, you kind of have to have an irrational confidence because uh, there's going to be ups and downs. You're going to have nights where you might go 0 for 7 or whatever it may be, and, and you just have to have that belief that the next shot's going in no matter what because the, the second you start to question yourself, things are going to go downhill for a long period of time. And uh, Against Kentucky, I mean, we, we stepped on the floor, and, and right away we knew we belonged because – we, we saw those athletes, they got seven footers out there. They got lottery picks, all that type of stuff. And, and we don't have that exactly, but we knew just we trusted each other so much that we weren't going to let any sort of kind of intangible thing like, well, not intangible, I guess, but those athletic things get in our way because we had all the intangible stuff on our side. We believed in each other, trusted each other. And at the end of the day, it's it, basketball is a team game. It's not, you're not going to put a couple lottery picks out there that, and if they can't play together, they're not going to, they're not going to win together. So it all just comes down to that. Got time for another segment, man. I know, let's, I know you're in demand. It. Yeah, we'll, we'll absolutely get into it. The, the fans, the viewers have some questions <laughs> as well. Uh, tell me about the QB challenge. The QB challenge is here and it's presented 
by Shake Shack. Shake Shack and Woodward Sports want to remind you it is always football season. And if you can spin it, you have a chance to go to the home opener this year. You can win two free tickets to this season's home opener. It's the Shake Shack quarterback challenge. If you can throw it on a rope, you can go to the home opener. Register today for your chance to win at any Shake Shack location or at WoodwardSports.com. Or you can scan the QR code right there to join. It's the Woodward Sports and Shake Shack QB challenge for your chance to win some tickets to the home opener. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod, perfectly fried clam shrimp platter, or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango iced tea, the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> you should see what I did there. Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience. It's called the Feldman Advantage. There's 18 Feldman Auto locations, all different brands as well. So whatever kind of car you need, Feldman Automotive has you covered. Go to FeldmanAuto.com, find the location nearest you, and don't forget Feldman Chevrolet, Michigan's number one Chevrolet dealer out there in Novi. Woodward Sports Network will be live out there. We'll be back out there next Monday. As a matter of fact, it is Feldman Automotive. All right, keeping it pushing here. We're joined in studio by the man of the hour, the guy that really took America, took the NCAA tournament by storm. His his name, his performance will forever be etched in NCAA tournament lore. He is Jack Golke. Neil Rule here with Sam Flannel, KG, Spencer Raxter as well. But, um, you know, a couple other things I wanted to get into. Yeah. And you're a sports fan. Like, you're a general oh, yeah. sports fan. You're – Bryce Drew. Oh, fuck the Packers. <laughs> yeah. That's look, crazy. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, like the NCAA tournament now, like the Bryce Drew shot. Jack Golke is going to be referred to that for the rest of time when you talk about the NCAA. Has that yeah. set in, man? No, I mean, one thing I was telling my teammates is uh, we were watching some of the other games, and, like, you see what kind of – you notice on the bottom of the screen, like you see the March Madness scoreboard, everything's been the same for so many years. And I was watching back just like the film of our game, just to try to figure out kind of what we're going to do the next day. And seeing that March Madness scoreboard on the bottom, for some reason, that's what kind of made it real for me is like, this was actually a, like, this was a tournament game. This was national TV. Seeing that on the bottom, I was like, okay, maybe maybe this is legit. Maybe this is not a dream anymore. <laughs> maybe this is uh, really going to last. Yeah, uh, Jack, I have, I have one. So the world now knows that you are a great three-point shooter. <laughs> when did you know that that was kind of your uh, ticket to uh, college basketball success, shooting the three? Uh, I, for, uh, to be honest, when I, was, when I was a kid, I'll give you a little story here. Fourth grade, first uh, like competitive basketball team I was on. We had a, you don't shoot very many threes when you're in fourth grade, but we had a play called ice cream where we would run it for a three point shot every game. And we kind of alternated who shot it. Our coach was going to buy us ice cream when we made, finally made the shot later in the season. It's finally my turn. We run the play. I make the shot first three of the season for our team. We get ice cream. We're all <laughs> celebrating. But I think it all kind of started from that. I was like, oh, I can make a three-pointer. So I just started shooting threes in my driveway and kind of getting better day by day. And, uh, yeah, it all just kind of started when I was a little kid, to be honest. 
Nice. I think what surprised me about you is the kind of threes you take. I mean, you were coming off screens <laughs> looking like a white stuff out there. Just you made it look so easy, man. Can you speak to like what it's like to get in a zone like that to hit 10 threes in a game? And, and when did you feel it was your night after the second three, third three? Like, when did you feel like, OK, yeah, I, I got this? Uh, it was. Yeah, I mean, first off, appreciate the white Steph Curry comp. I'll take that any day. <laughs> Every day. It was looking uh, good out there, man. Pause. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, uh, I think Neil could, Neil knows, like I've told him this before and people might not believe it, but, uh, after honestly my first two missed shots is when I knew it was going to be a good night. Mm. And Neil knows that happened in Milwaukee too. It was, uh, is one of those things where you kind of get off clean, easy looks at the beginning of the game. You don't make them, obviously you want to make them, but I was just like, Hey, if I'm going to get a couple clean looks to start this game off, I'm going to get in a roll, get in a groove and kind of just calibrate this jumper so I can lock it in and start sprinting off screens, like you said. And uh, you kind of just ride the wave from there. My teammates got me the rock. They were sending me screens. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was just, was just easy, especially in that first half. Like, you don't usually get up 13 threes and a half as a shooter uh, like I am. So as soon as I was able to get that many shot attempts, I was like, I got to capitalize on this. So I'm going to take advantage. Damn right. Jack Golke joining us here. Big D Energy Woodward Sports Network. I have a question here from none other than Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion. That's, who's, uh, that's the usual, pretty cool. His usual co-host <laughs> on the show. He wants to know, what's, what's, what's the future look like for you? And, and kind of a follow. There are some other questions that we'll get okay. to in the chat. So if you guys have a question, drop it in the chat out there. But you know, what does the future look like for you right now? Yeah, I'm uh, super busy right now, but I'm going to try to pursue a pro basketball career. Uh, once things uh, kind of slow down a little bit and I'll be doing uh, NBA workouts, hopefully, and, and trying to do that summer experience with uh, the NBA and kind of see how that goes um, and then go from there. Maybe it's going to be overseas. Maybe it's going to be G League. Uh, maybe things go really well and I get an, some sort of opportunity, but just going to keep pursuing the game of basketball. It's given me so many good things so far and I want to see how far I can take me. I got a team that needs your help. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Riley is number. You know, that's a guy who, <laughs> right. I, Everyone was telling me that. Get, culture, man. Yeah. Just, but, Jack, I, I talked about the moment where you dropped the bar of we're not a Cinderella. Another one of the most iconic moments that I thought from your performance was the Jordan shrug walking down the court. After the banking three off the dribble, he was wild, the Jordan man. shrug down the court. Again, did that just come to you hey, or was it just a spur of moment J kind of thing? Hold on. I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a little spin on that. You did that on purpose, didn't you? <laughs> I know you, bro. You did that. So, admit it. So... Neil, Neil knows me a little too well. Um, <laughs> I make the shot, whatever. I was on the ground. I didn't even see the ball go through the net. I legitimately turned around to my bench, and I saw them all cheering. So that's when, yeah, I was like, all right, I got to pull something out here because I didn't even know it went in. Yes. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I love it, man. You are, you are a showman, no doubt about that. Uh, Gary McCarrick wants to know, Jack, you're a national hero. Uh, will you participate in the college three-point contest? That's a given, right? Yeah, I mean uh, – I'm going, planning to go to Phoenix, participate in the three-point contest. If they didn't invite me, something, something would be up. No doubt. Yeah, like no doubt about that. Um, but, yeah, man, it, it, was, it, it was absolutely incredible. I do want to talk about Saturday uh, yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. The environment uh, that, that we were in and, and the Oakland fans. And, yeah. I mean, there was nobody left at Oakland. Everybody was down. <laughs> everybody was down in Pittsburgh. The game against NC State, and, you know, we, we came out there. NC State got the jump a little bit. Blake Lampman made a couple made a couple of deep threes that yep. really did you get that sense that Blake Lampman kind of kind of brought us out of that 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 haze a little bit, I guess you could say. Yeah. And, and after that, like it was back on. For sure. Uh he he's been steady all year and and those two big shots that he hit, like we we didn't really have anything going until that point. Yeah. And uh that's just the type of player he is. He always kind of just shows up when the team needs him the most. So uh, just another one of those moments he's had him all year that, that he just capitalizes on and, and makes sure we all feel more comfortable in that situation. <laughs> Art Vandelay, Jack, go play in Europe. The ladies are way better there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a buddy who's in Italy right now. Uh, he has a girlfriend, but he says there are a lot of women there if that's what I'm looking for. Hey. <laughs> Left it out there. What do you got, Spamo? Hey, Jack, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I, even though you're on the show and you're the hero, i got to keep it real. You aren't my favorite Golden Grizzly on the air. <laughs> I'm a big Trey Townsend guy. Yep. I was one of the first contingents that uh, scouted him during the Monty Bates game the, uh, last year. What was it like? What's it like? Because Trey, you and Trey were going bar for bar in that game against <laughs> mm -hmm. NC State. What's it like playing with a guy who would – Horizon League Player of the Year. What's Trey like off the court? 
Uh, man, Trey's my favorite player on the Golden Grizzlies, so <laughs> so I feel you on that. Uh, he he's a tremendous dude. I mean, just super down to earth. He he's he's in there working just like all the rest of us, and uh, he he did a, a lot of sacrificing this year. He could have he could have averaged twenty plus. He could have averaged ten plus rebounds, all that stuff, but. Uh, he put his put his body out there on the line. I mean, you saw him at the end of the NC State game. Dude was diving on the floor left and right. Like, he's just that type of player, that type of guy. He loves his teammates. So can't say enough good things about him and, and just how tremendous he is as a player. He's he's going to take a next step and, and go to the next level wherever that is, and I'm super excited for him because he definitely deserves it. Yes, uh, Trey Townsend, another Oakland University legend, conference player of the year yep. and the first uh, turn NCAA tournament team for Oakland in over a decade. I want to ask you this too, Jack, because you were the star of the greatest sports moment in the history <laughs> of Oakland University. However, there was another game, and you guys yep. were this close to a yeah. Sweet 16. You guys uh, lost it overtime. So a couple days after the fact, are you more grateful for the season that you had and just kind of like sink, like let, letting that all sink in, or are you still disappointed about that loss to NC State? Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a little bit of both because obviously we wanted to go to Dallas so bad and, and play in that Sweet 16. And uh, me personally, I wanted to play against Marquette super bad. Obviously, being from Milwaukee, that would have been a ton of fun. But uh, we we definitely felt like we could have still made some noise in the tournament. But, I mean, we were in that locker room after the game, and we just said, man, like, we, we put it all on the line. We, we gave it absolute 100%. Uh, obviously, we, there were some plays we wish would have gone our way. We wish we would have made a couple more shots. But, I mean, that's what we love about sports. Sometimes they go your way. Sometimes they don't. And you just got to live with the results as long as you prepare properly. And we know we did throughout the whole season. Uh, I do have to ask this about the NC State game. This will be the last question yeah. on it. DJ Burns. I was just about to go ahead. Man. Yeah. That DJ guy. Burns, what, I, he he's a college Jokic man, yeah, like yeah. Dude. Uh, absolute J- Jack, <laughs> He's 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 throwing these shots up off the top of the glass, yeah. and they're feathery soft, and they're going through. And he can pass. I, 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 he can he can pass all that kind of stuff. I, Trey talked about it. I think you talked about it as well. What was it like trying to get a rebound against that man? Dude, he was. There was a, one specific play towards the end of the game where they took a corner three, and I was on the opposite side of the court. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to pursue this rebound. I turn around, try to pursue this rebound, and I just turn, and I can't even see the rim. He, <laughs> dude is taking up, like, I swear he's five feet wide. I try to get around him, and by the time I even move, he's already, he's already got the ball, puts it back in. and It was a disappointing play, but I was just like, there is absolutely nothing I could have done in that situation Mm -hmm. to get around this behemoth of a man. (laughs) That that is the way to put it, man. That that is absolutely absolutely the way to put it. Um, I mean, you guys beat Kentucky, man. Yeah. And and it was true because I got asked that question, like, what's, what's it like, you know, after, after losing the NC State game? And I kind of described it. It's almost like a hangover. Like you wake up and you, and you were like, okay, like, it's all right. But then you get the sweats a little bit, and you're like, yeah. oh, this sucks. Yeah. It sucks we lost. But then you start to feel good again, so you're full of hope. And you're like, man, we beat Kentucky. Is, is it still like that? Are you still riding the waves? Yeah, it's, it's still a roller coaster. I was talking to a couple of my guys last night, and at first we were like, like damn, that was an amazing season. Like, we, did, we accomplished all the goals that we set out at the beginning of the season. Like, we, you got to be loving that and stuff. And then we were like, oh, but – we missed this free throw, but we missed this jump, or we missed this defensive assignment. Like we'd be going to Dallas this week, we'd be preparing for Marquette, all this stuff. So yeah, it's it's just a roller coaster of of what could have been, but also what we accomplished, and just back and forth, man. Uh, Forty Gumble wants to know in the board sports chat, Jack asking on behalf of Spenny, do you watch anime? If so, what's your favorite? Are you an anime guy? I Ooh, can't say I'm an anime guy. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. I, I knew that. That's why I wanted to. Do though? <laughs> <laughs> can't say I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's go Red Wings. There's a couple questions about my salmon jacket, which I don't get. Uh, Jack, did Neil Salmon Jacket ever catch your eye running back down the floor, courtside? Well, I already knew how good Neil was looking at it in the salmon jacket, so I didn't have to look at, at him during the game. Uh, let's go Red Wings. Sparty, what size salmon jacket would DJ Burns have to wear? Uh, it's a big jacket quadruple x maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah. he is a he is definitely a man um but jack man i appreciate you coming out here i know like how valuable your time is right now and, yeah. and that's cool and I, I did want to thank you for like a magical ride and everything that you've done for me you know through, through all of this what you did for oakland uh both of our alma maters uh assumed to be uh but but i do i, I really really appreciate it man and uh 
good luck with everything that goes on in the future. We'll certainly be pulling yeah. for you. Yeah. And uh, so what we got? Some NBA summer league, perhaps. I mean, that's that's the goal. If I could get a summer league opportunity, that would be terrific. Uh, obviously, things are just kind of moving parts right now, so I don't really know what, exactly what will happen. But if I can get a chance, I'm definitely going to take it. Shout out Buffalo Wild Wings, right? TurboTax. <laughs> right. Check out Buffalo Wild Wings, TurboTax, UFOs, all that, all that good stuff. <laughs> absolutely. Jack, appreciate you, man. Yes, sir, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me on, and appreciate you, Neil. You've done a lot for us and the university and me in particular as well. You're my guy, man. We'll be in touch. We gotta get you, we'll get you back on here because you're a big football guy. Yep. So we're we're gonna get you back on here and and you know see what see where that road leads. That, that's perfect. I like the sound of that. All right, tell them about. I guess this one's on you, right, Spenny? Premier Pet Supply, Premier the Jack Pet Golke Supply. of Pet Stores. Premier Pet Supply, the Jack Golke of Pet Stores, the GOAT. Premier Pet Supply, when it comes to your pet, don't settle. Give your pet the best. Premier Pet Supply is hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences the online and big box retailers with one major difference. They're family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you. Same day local curbside home delivery. Premier Pet Supply, give your pet the best. www.premierpetsupply.com. And let me tell you about the quarterback challenge presented by Shake Shack. Shake Shack and Wilbert Sports want to remind you it's always football season. How would you like to win two tickets to this season's home opener? It's the Shake Shack QB challenge and if you could throw it on a rope you can be at the home opener. Register today for your chance to win at any Shake Shack location or at WilbertSports.com or you can scan the QR code right there to join in on the contest. It's this quarterback challenge presented by Shake Shack. At work and at home we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm, we protect Michigan. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damn party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Love Woodward Sports? Love wearing clothes? Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Les Stanford Chevrolet got Chevy, Buick, GMC, Cadillac. 2022 Silverado for $289 a month. It is one of the best places in all of Metro Detroit to go get a car, a location in Dearborn and a location in Ferndale, right on Woodward Avenue, just a little far, a, a little, a little uh, ways away from where we are right now. LessStanford.com, Les Stanford together. Let's drive. All right, keeping it pushing here. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Big thanks to Jack Golke for coming in studio and uh, hanging out with everybody. Uh, appreciate his time as well. That was He's got a lot of stuff lined up. Huh? The college three-point shooting contest. Yeah. Uh, the media tours as well. So uh, good for him. Uh, good to see, too, that the, that the guys can capitalize financially yeah. on it. <laughs> Man, I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, players of years past that uh, wish they would have done what what they did in today's times. And uh, Jack Golke, man, that, like I said, 
you're in the presence of somebody whose life is forever changed, and there's something kind of cool about that. No. A tournament legend for life. No, he, he, cer- he certainly is, certainly is. Uh, there is some other stuff, you know, to get into as well. We, we did talk about the Michigan coaching situation. I know the, the re- – bring me up to date on the Red Wings. Uh, bring me All up right? to date on the Red Wings. So, so the Islanders are playing ball a little bit. They've kind of fallen apart. But it's just this gauntlet again. If they can get through this – and still, like, be in striking distance, right? We, then, then we can put the car flags back up, right? I don't know. Because Washington's now on a two-game winning streak. Wait, wait, and what, what happened? When did Washington come back to life? <laughs> hey, and now that's the Red Wings' next game at Washington. And all of a sudden, that's turning into somewhat of a must-win. I don't know if it's, like, a must-win. Maybe must-point. If, if it Like, a, a term that'll only be used in, uh, in, in, in hockey. And, and honestly... They're paying the price for that two and eight stretch right now. When you're in a playoff run, no matter how comfortable you are at the time, it just can't happen. And I know uh, two and six of those were uh, they were two and six in games when Dylan Larkin was out. That just can't happen. And now I think that that that's what it is. They've played better prior to the Nashville game. They won three of their previous four. But even the Nashville game, if you would have told me before that game that you held Nashville to one goal, I'd be like, great, you win. But they didn't. That, 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 that was a tough one when it was at least looking for a lot of the game that the Red Wings were going to get a point. It was going to be 0-0 going into overtime. But yeah, they, the Red Wings, they've got to they've gotta win a couple of these, of these road games, particularly tonight. That would be, if they win tonight, I'll feel a little bit better about their future moving forward. But if they lose and don't get a point, it's going to be real tough moving forward if they want to make the playoffs. No, and, and, and you're absolutely right because this does become even must point. I don't know because they still have a game in hand. You can't lose tonight. Right. You, right. you definitely can't yeah, lose yeah, tonight. There, yeah. there is no doubt about that. So it does kind of all come down to this, man, for real, because – the the schedule's a killer, man. Mm. It's it's an absolute killer. You got to go to Carolina. You got to go to Tampa. You got to go to Florida, like flannel. It it could all look. I'm not look. Everyone in this business, they say hope and fear, hope and fear, hope and fear. That's what gets people to be engaged and stuff like that. I don't work in that space, and maybe that's bad for my career. I don't know, but I don't. But I, I'm not trying to sell you this or oversell you this or anything like that. They could be out of this thing by the weekend. Yeah. They they could be. Well, and that's, that's why, real. And that's why I mentioned we all knew that this stretch was uh, coming up. And that two and eight stretch, two of them when Larkin played, by the way, you had a home game against Phoenix, which you let slip away. I know you say road games are a 50 50 proposition, but even losing at Phoenix, if that's part of a two and eight stretch, that's that's not acceptable. You lost at Buffalo. You lost at Pittsburgh. You lost at home to the Islanders to really start it off. Those are those are some games that you you you're at least the better team, or at least so you think. I know road games are a little bit are a little bit dicey, but you have to round during that stretch, and you can't do that when you're trying to when, when you're trying to make a playoff run. They went basically from comfortably in to borderline. Certainly, in. they were certainly in. They, they, they were, were certainly in. They were certainly in to where they were passed up to where after a recent stretch they were three points ahead of Washington. Then Washington goes on a two game winning streak, and now you're in Washington tomorrow to play them. And you're at a must point. It's crazy how how quickly things th- th- things can change, but that's why you can't tailspin like that. Losing eight out of ten, and in those games, I mean, in the less. And, and here's the thing too. I know that we're grateful for what he's brought to the team, but Alex DeBrincat kind of fell on his face when Dylan Larkin went out. He's went. He's gone twelve games without a goal. And uh, I get it. Goals. Hey. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't do that. If that's a trying- fact. That's a factual statement, Flint. Like. You're speaking a factual statement, right? It's not good enough. I, you know, he'll be the first one to tell you that. It's yeah. not good enough. No, it, it's not. And as I've said before, he's got a chance to totally redeem himself, as, uh, as uh, Lloyd Christmas would, would, would say. But time is running out. How about you start tonight and actually, and actually score? Because the thing about the Red Wings team is you thought, and, and I understand Nashville's a tough team and it's, it's an away game. With Dylan Larkin at least back, the offense would be back on track. But they just got shut out in a game that was very, very winnable or at the very least appointable, and they didn't get one. And it's, 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 it's a playoff push. It's not just an early, season, an early regular season game. It's a playoff push. I'm going to knock them for even that game against Nashville. It's not good enough. Spenny, how we feeling, man? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Obviously, Nashville is one of the hottest teams in the NHL coming into that game, so it's I'm, I'm not. They're gonna, all one of the. I'm, it doesn't yeah. seem like they're all one of the hottest teams. <laughs> yeah, it is. We have, we have a brutal stretch of games going forward, 
but there are two that you can mark on your calendar that if the Red Wings win these two games, they'll make the playoffs. If they don't win either of them, they probably won't. And that is obviously Tampa Bay and Washington. You're playing yeah. in Tampa Bay, the team in front of you, and in Washington, the team behind you. Those are four extremely huge points. If you win both of those games, it would be an eight-point swing in the standings, and you need that to stay alive. So that those are the two games I have marked on my calendar. for. If they, may, if they win both of those games, I would... Barring a terrible collapse, say that they're going to be in. I mean, and that's and that's why I say to like Alex to bring it. I mean, twelve games, zero goals, four points. But that, like I said, he still has a chance tonight against or tonight against Washington and at Tampa Bay would also be good times to uh, redeem yourself. And also, I mean, the defense has looked better since they've inserted Simon Evanson into the lineup. Hopefully, that can be carried over as well. And oh, by the way, another another sign of potential good things to come. Alex Lyon looked pretty damn good back yes, there. Yes, he did. Maybe he can go on a little bit of a of, of a stretch as well. And James Reimer, the last of three times he's been in net, he's played. He's also played well. And oh, by the way, Lucas Raymond is kind of turning into a star right in front of our eyes. So they have what it takes to make a run and and get that last playoff spot. But it could be over by the time you go back home, and that's kind of and that's that's pretty sobering, man. Um, I've almost I've given up on the Tampa Bay end of it, Spenny. Yeah, like but you're still. not. You, there's what was there ten games left? Mm -hmm. You're seven points behind them. Yeah, you're that's not, a wrap. You're not going to catch them, but still, it would be a huge. It's a four point swing. But now, but on the flip side of that coin, though, you need to beat them not because they're Tampa. Because you need, you the need points. points. Yeah, you need the points. <laughs> yeah, you just you just need points and even a point. Yes. It, what what's acceptable? I because for me, you you have to get. I say you have to win the Washington game. In regulation. That, yes. You, yes. You have to win it in regulation. You cannot give them a point, and you need two points out of it. And if you do go to overtime, you have to win yeah. that game. Mm -hmm. It's not a want to. You have to win that game if it goes to overtime, which is wild because you're not playing the same game when you get – but I don't care. Like, that's that's the way that it – this is the, the spot they have in the game. So, you know, as, as I look at their schedule and I see it, and I see the matchup – against Washington, and then you go to Carolina and Tampa and Florida. You got to get three points. I, I, you know, I, I'm assuming a, a win of some fashion against Washington. You got to get three points out of, out of at Carolina, at Tampa, and at Florida. That's not a good spot to be in, man. No, it's just not. It's not. And this was really – there have been times throughout the year where you're kind of looking at the season in segments, and one of them you obviously noticed was this uh, gauntlet of a uh, road, road games that they're currently in right now. And prior to even the Red Wings' 2-8 and eight stretch, when a lot of it was with Dylan Larkin out, I was looking at that as five points in five games would be massive. At this point, given the fact that you already played one and didn't get a point, if you get five in the next four, you're probably feeling all right. You're probably not out of it. And, hey, if you beat Washington, maybe you're even ahead of them. So I would say five in the next four would be – that would be acceptable because the reality is is you're, you're going to have to play a little bit above yourself and win some tough games if you're trying to get if, – if you're trying to uh, regain the playoff spot, which you kind of blew. That's the nature of – that's the nature of the season. No, no, it is. It's just it's, – it's a dangerous time it out here dangerous right time. now. You could, be, you could be done by the time you get back to LCA. You could. Like, whether mathematically Damn, or not, sheesh. you could be done. KG, what happened to us? I have no clue, man. But my question is, how much of this will fall, if they don't make the playoffs, how much of this will fall on Stevie Y? Because that's going to well, be it's, a Well, it's all going to fall on Stevie Y. I'm not saying that. The, the prices for the rentals were obscene yes. mm -hmm. in, the, in the trade. Even Spencer Raxter, who's the king of the transaction, mm -hmm. Spenmo pounds the table. For, for every transaction possible out there. Even Spenny took a step back and said, easy, guys. And that's kind of that's kind of how I based my reaction to yeah. all of it, was based on what Spen Spencer had to say. And I, I do, you're talking firsts and fourths for guys that won't be there. Like that was right. that was a little extreme. They are still they are still in talent acquisition slash talent development mode. Like I know everyone's gonna get the pitchforks out and things like that. And I really do want to sneak one in here, like slide into the play. It wasn't sneaking. You know what? I take that back. It's not sneaking in because three weeks ago you were in. Yeah. Yeah. The car flags were flying. Yeah. Now we're protecting them on windy days, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're. Yeah. You've been doing that for a minute now. But. You know, well, you can't have it <laughs> out there. Saying. 
when I put my car flag up, they didn't lose. They didn't win a game until I took it down again. So yeah. it's staying. So you're it's, taking the blame. Yeah, I will take the blame. They were I was I was protecting they, mine. They were zero and seven with the car flag up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not great. Yeah. Not great, Bob. I put it up the night of that OT winner. Oh yeah, in, in Chicago, and then they lost seven straight games. Jeez. Just a <sighs> just a fan. How quickly we turn. Mm-hmm. On the wings. I'm not saying they can't do it. On the wings. See, see, super, I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. See, j- just a fan, I don't like that because you're allowed to criticize a team for going on a 2-8 and eight stretch, including a home loss to Arizona. It's not turning on the team. It's just you were comfortably in, and now you're in danger of if you lose tonight, I would say you're more likely than not to miss the playoffs. And it hasn't taken that long. So we're not turning on them. The Red Wings themselves kind of are possibly in the process of kind of effing their season. WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Uh, Catsbot. Uh, Neil is making excuses. One injury should not cause a team to collapse. No, Catsbot, I'm with you. Exactly. There is no excuse for that. Yeah, I know Larkin went down, and then you went on to say Eisenman's roster had no depth. But no, 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 Catspot. That's not what I was told. The most guys with double-digit goals in the NHL. That's what I was told. Then all of a sudden, Larkin goes down, and it all goes away. That's on the players. That's not on Stevie Y. Yeah. You got to be, be-, be better, bro. What but do you got? That's why I asked how much of this is on Stevie Y, because during no, this it, stretch— it they, will be on him, nah, but, but it's not on him. During this stretch, they haven't shown a lot of fight in these games. Do you think Derek Lalonde deserves some of that blame, too? Or— that's going to be next in the pecking order yeah. because that's the way things work. I mean, I I, I don't know. I, again, you had the most guys with double-digit goals in the league. They stopped scoring. Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned it before. It wasn't just Dabrinkit. It was Comfer and Sprong as well. Guys who had been consistent scorers all season long have just – they've all been in a drought. The one thing I will say, though, is that as great as the – well, it's – it's still still the Confer Sprong and Debrinket signings were very good signings. Hole and Petrie, not the best. No. Hole doesn't even play, and your defense is about what it was last year. I mean, they can't all be bangers, dude. I, 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 under, <laughs> I understand, but like when uh, when Christian Fisher is your <laughs> third or fourth best offensive weapon in a stretch of like ten games, that's not a good Oh that's not a good scenario. Christian Fisher's scoring. Yeah. He's scoring more than Debrinkit. Yes. That's insane. Sheesh. That could, that can't happen. That can't happen. Alex Debrinkit like needs to step up. I, you were I, brought in here I'm to a be simp. that guy. I, I like him too, but like this is an unacceptable stretch of play for him. And he'll say it. He'll he'll say that for sure. He needs to score goals. He needs to. If he we said, want to make the playoffs, Alex Debrinkit has to score goals. He's had 40 in a season twice, and if he keeps up this drought, he's in danger of having statistically kind of a down year. Mm-hmm. And I get it. He was an all-star and all that, but I, but I said this. I don't, I don't believe you were here. I think we should retroactively revoke Alex Dabrinkit's all-star spot and give it to Dylan Larkin because Dylan Larkin's your best player. He's by far the best player on the roster. Not and Planet close. Fitness is by far the best gym to work out at, and we're live Thanks. at the Planet Fitness Studios, as you can see right there. Dollar down, 10 bucks a month, get you access to your home club. You want to be a baller, shot caller, dollar down, twenty four ninety nine a month. That is right. You'll have a Planet Fitness black card. You get access to over 2,500 Planet Fitnesses around the world. Unlimited guest privileges, the hydro massage, the tanning, all of it. You get to do whatever you want there at Planet Fitness. You guys know my story. I've been a member there three years. I love it. I've used Planet Fitness to accomplish all my fitness goals, and you guys can too. But you got to get started, man. You absolutely do. You make that New Year's resolution, slacking on it right now. Get in there, everybody. Get it done. PlanetFitness.com. You can join there. Pull in the parking lot. There's over 50 of them in the metro Detroit area. It's Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. I love Woodward.
Woodward Sports love wearing clothes, then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends, impress your boss, impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. What's better than crispy chicken and pizza while watching your favorite team play? Let me tell you about Soroki's Crispy Chicken and Pizza. Their food is amazing and their locations are popping up all over Metro Detroit. There's one in Warren that's like a mile and a half away from my house. Great stuff. A perfect takeout option featuring hand-breaded fried chicken, New York pizza, fresh salads, sides, and more. Check out their full menu and find the closest Soroki's near you at Soroki's.com. That's S-A-R-O-K-I-S.com. Soroki's and Woodward Sports. Now that's crispy. All right, back out of here. Big D Energy coming down the stretch. Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Sam Flannel in for DMAC. Of course, we got Spencer Raxter and the man, KG, here in the house. Also, all of you in the WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Uh, oh, I did want to tell another NCA story, one that slipped my one that slipped my mind. I told you guys fun. all about how they seed the hotels. Yeah. So the higher seed you are, the better hotel that you get. Um, so that's interesting, the way that they operate that. Here's another good story. So Jack Golke makes 10 threes against Kentucky. National icon, Golden Grizzlies pull off the stunner, get the win. He's forever linked with, with NCAA tournament lore. Mm-hmm. Want to give the man the game ball, right? Yeah. Nope. Can't give him the game ball. Wow. That's so whack. That's crazy. NCAA really? wouldn't, wouldn't let us get the basketball to, to give the Jack. It. What's that? You should have popped it. Should have popped it. <laughs> oh, no. So <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, man. Wow. So just to let you know. That's that just so me. Wow. That that that's NCAA, weak. NCAA sucks. Yeah. That shows you how much they love their blue bloods. Because what are they going to do with the ball? Just toss it in the bag with the yeah. rest of them. Right. Like, that's yeah. crazy. So that was pretty weak. No yeah. doubt about that. So just remember, you know, that's uh, right, wow. that's how it is. But, uh, yeah, so coming down the stretch here, Woodward Sports Network. You know we're three days away from Tiger season? Yeah, don't yeah. feel like you do it. I'm excited. Are I'm you? Ex- oh, I mean, <laughs> it looks not. Like, hey, I'll tell you what. And there, for, there, There's a path, at least. I'll well, give you that. And it sucks for this particular individual, but Matt Manning is in the minors. Yeah. He's starting the season in the minors. That's, that's, that tells you something about this uh, pitching staff. Oh, and, yeah, it does. and as I've said before, and I'll mention it again, the last you saw Tarek Skubal and Reese Olsen on a regular season mound, they were basically Diamondbacks era Randy Johnson and, and Kurt Schilling, at least for a month. Yeah. And Tarek Skubal was the best pitcher on the planet. And you got Jack Flaherty, who had a very, very good spring training after having a disappointing season last year. I mean, you got Kenta Maeda, and, that, and then you have uh, Casey Mize, who, again, last time he played a full season, he was very good. He has about a, an ERA of about 370, 150 innings, 30-plus th- starts. It's great, really solid bullpen, at least you, you, you would think, with the addition, too, of Shelby Miller. You got Andrew mm-hmm. Chafin. I mean, the, the usual suspects from last year, a couple of nice signings in the offseason, nice. a couple of the young guys coming up. It's I really mean, just on the Spenny, bats. you look pretty excited. I do. I am pretty excited. And before I get into it too much, I was just looking at the picture I took with Jack. You think if I put that as my Tinder, my Tinder profile picture, I'll get more matches? Oh, you might. The, the Especially picture with Jack from, Golke. Probably. From the Oakland yeah. campus. Can't definitely. hurt. Because I got the one with DMAC right now, and it does pretty well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the Jack Golke one, it'll definitely, okay, I'm going to. I think, yeah, I, you know, you could, you, could, you could catch a heater with that for a couple yeah. weeks, I think. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, I might have to do that. But, yeah, I, I am excited about this uh this pitching staff, obviously, Chris Fetter is is the best pitching coach in the MLB. Tariq Skubal has some of the highest odds to win AL Cy Young for a reason. Casey Mize making the making the team is, yes. is huge for me. Yeah, that is it. huge for me for him. Like I love Casey Mize. He's got, like I said, one of the best pitches in baseball when it's on in his splitter. Mm-hmm. He was one one for a reason. He's supposed to be another guy that could be a Cy Young level player. Yeah. So him coming back is awesome. Hopefully, all those guys could stay healthy because I liked. Adding Maeda and Flaherty because those are two vets who've been there before, know know how to go through a whole season and, and put a bunch of innings on their arms. So I, I'm excited for this this starting pitching staff. It's gonna have to carry them for a majority of the season if the bats aren't clicking, but I think it can. I really do. 
Neil, what's it gonna take for you to be excited, man? What's that? What's it gonna take for you to be excited? Because I know you you kind of are are little not excited because of how the organization is treating the El Mago situation, the Miggy money and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you hesitant. Why? Because because we're talking about six leg parlays again. I you know what it. I'm saying? Like, there's a path. But you got to give them a chance, though. Well, and I will. See, like. It's a new year. You guys always do this to me. I watch every game yeah. in some fashion or listen to every game. I'm in, I'm in more than most of you. I will check in in some form or fashion every single day. Because Tigers baseball, it's my thing. Now, look, yeah. is baseball boring? Yeah. Do my kids like baseball? No, they don't. But but I do, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's fine. I, I like it. I like it out on the back deck during summer because it's warm and stuff like that. I like going to the games. Uh, I don't get a chance to go as much as I used to, but you know that's fine. It's just, it, it, what's it going? It was man? it was it was there for you. You could write a check and add a critical component to the team. I get that. And it was short term, and it wasn't a ton of money, and it was right there for the taking. I get it. And they just chose not to. And And there's no cap, so save me that. And they're not doing that now, so what's what's the excuse now? Clearly, they're not going to do that. It may still be hope at the trade deadline, but as of right now, they're not making any moves. They're pushing the young talent. So, Well, I I will say this, KG, and I'm not – I was I didn't have all my eggs in like the JD Martinez or the Matt Chapman basket. I How, didn't either. It was it was the the principle of it. It wasn't a move. Yeah. It wasn't like go get me JD Martinez. Like show me a philosophy. Well, my my point though is that if the Tigers have a disappointing year, then I'll look back at that and be like maybe you should have done that. Because I mean JD Martinez was still like a 30 homer, 100 RBI rbi player last year. true but who said he wanted to be here no and, and and kg i'm i'm definitely on on your side i think that the tigers have enough in their lineup i think they made a couple of acquisitions like canna and urshela that are actually going to be a lot right. better than some people that, that, that than a lot of people think i already talked about the pitching staff the bullpen the bullpen acquisitions the guys like tyler holton and jason foley and will vested uh and Alex Lang, who were there last year, I'm all in. I think this is going to be a team that actually wins the AL Central. Yeah. But if they're disappointing, that's when a lot of the people who were pounding the table for Martinez or Chapman can now be validated. And I, I'll wear that. I'll wear that if it happens. How about you wear a new haircut from Lady Jane's? How about that? Hey, that is a great transition. I I, I think I actually need one this week, and you guys can all get one too. Get a great haircut like this. Awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, and relax, and let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here, and we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party, it's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans, starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Start your day with Wake Up Woodward, Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. live on the Woodward Sports Network. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports. Sports talk, banter, and live fan interaction all on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. Coming down the stretch here, final segment of the show, Big D Energy. Didn't even get a chance to get to the NFL rule changes, though I don't know, like, okay, they changed the rule. 
And it's the... Uh, then what? The challenge one was actually presented by... Uh, the Lions. The Lions. Yeah. Yeah, we were the ones who put it out there. And Again, I don't understand the difficulty with the challenge thing. Hey, you get two challenges. If you're right, you don't. it doesn't cost you a challenge. Yeah. yeah. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I, I'm i penalized because you were wrong. Yeah, yeah exactly. Stupid. Yeah. And Flat out li- stupid. You're more than likely going to be wrong again. Right. Yeah, because you already proved you're going to be wrong once. Well, I mean, how many times have we watched an NFL game? And I know that, like, human error is a, is a part of it when you have human refs. When you know the coaches are thinking, why the hell do I have to challenge something that is so obvious? It happens almost every single game. Right. And, yeah, so I, that, that's why I believe that you really shouldn't even have a challenge limit. But, hey, uh, that's, that, 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 that's, another, that's another discussion for another day. Uh, LFG, El Mago is back. Yes, he is. You know what? I am on board, KG. Okay. You want to know why? This was just brought to my attention. The Detroit Tigers have won 20 Grapefruit League games for the first time since 2012. There Get in. Go, Give, it hey. Give it up. Give it up. Get in. Are we going to make a t-shirt? Andy Abanez has been raking. I'm just saying. Part, like, Port, we don't got to talk about that because he's been abysmal in the spring. But Andy Abanez has been raking. Parker Meadows has been raking. Like, Colt Keith has looked good. I, you know, Saying. Riley Green. And Riley Green, yeah. Honestly, I feel like if it gets really bad to a point with El Mago, they'll probably either make him ninth or bench him. I, I, you're not just going to let him continue to bring your young talent down, especially if they start to show something early in the season. I get, I get it, Neil. I understand. <laughs> I mean, is there a snowball's chance in hell that he has somewhat of a bounce back here? No. Nah. Based no. on what? Yeah, no. Absolutely not. I, I, no. no, I'm not. I'm not Mr. Optimism. He's been the worst everyday player in baseball the last couple of years. But there was a time where, did you know at one point in time, it seems like a fossil now that Javi Baez was second in the NL and MVP. It's crazy. In 2018. That actually happened. And the craziest part, what happened when he was that good? His team won a World Series. Yep. So, like, maybe... If you're not the worst player in the history of the MLB, you can contribute to a good roster. Well, they won the World but Series a couple years prior. But, yeah. but, but I, I know what you mean. He was a contributing member yeah. of that yeah. team. And they had an all-star they squad. such though. a good team. Man. Yeah, Kyle Schwarber. Yeah. Well, now he's Bryant. the worst player in Major League Baseball. The worst. Yes. yes. The worst. Do you know what it really sucks? You know? Not the worst in his position. But no, literally the worst. I don't think A.J. Hinch is putting up with that shit this year. After a certain point, I feel like he'll get benched. They're clearly not going to do anything with the money, at least right now. So... What else are you gonna do? Well, he remember last year he did that, like when yeah. he did when yeah. El Mago went El Mago on the bases in Toronto. But he remember tried that? To give him a chance, and he let him back. Well, he, well, he yanked him out. He and kept him out the good, next game. Good games, and then he tried to give him another chance. But I don't think he's putting up with that this year. It is too much riding on this year. You know who else had a had a hell of a spring? Ryan Kreidler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that, that, also, so that's there's also. your there's your replacement. <laughs> he's not. He, hey, Zach Short was your other option last year. Ryan Kreidler and Zach Short, there are levels to this. Yes. I'll just, I'll yes. just Ryan say Ryan Kreidler is a much better prospect. Yeah. So how many, how many leg parlay do we have to hit here? <laughs> see, see, Break it down. I don't, I don't see it as like a leg parlay yeah. because you saw last season, Casey Mize out the whole year. Right. Yeah. Riley Green played less than 100 games. Kerry Carpenter played less than 120. Matt Manning and Tarek Skubal both pitched half the season. They still won 78. And it was because mm-hmm. of guys like Andy Abanez, like Reese Olsen, like uh, Jake Rogers, obviously Spencer Torkelson having, having a, uh, a, a good season. You know, the bullpen. And even the guys that I just mentioned, when they played, they were good. So you don't have to hit every single parlay for them to be acceptable. You they, don't. There's a or lot of young, exciting talent on this team. A lot. I didn't even mention. How many leg like parlay? What do we have to have to win? We have to have Riley Green, 130 games. 130 yes. games. That's, but that's not. That accounts for a trip to the injured list. He just can't play under 100 again. Yes. Yeah, that's true. You need Torque to be what he was last year, even not, better. Because really. you, you have to have a 30 home run guy. Yes. In today's yeah. day and age, you have to. And if Riley Green stays healthy, I think you could have two, with Riley Green and Spencer Torkelson. Yeah. I do. I think. Okay. I think Green could hit. I think Torque could hit 40. And I think yeah. Riley Green, if he stays healthy for like 130 plus games, 40s can, aggressive, Spanning. I mean, he hit 19 in like yeah. 45 or 50 games last year after the All Star break. Like he was hot. I mean, 40 is aggressive, but at least with him, there's like documented evidence of him hitting 30. Yeah, dude crushes the ball, man. And yeah. if he All can, right. 
not get off to a, like I, I'm not gonna lie the the spring training stuff is kind of I'm with you. Kind of hit me with with torque a little bit, but hopefully he can. And the amount of, out of players, come out of it. did he did he have more hits than ha, than? Oh, well, Javi. I don't even know honestly. It's pretty, huh? it's pretty close. <laughs> oh. He was hitting like one thirty, like not not good at all. Yeah. And the worst part is, in this spring training, so many players have just shined. Yeah. We didn't even mention Jace Young, and I, yeah. I get it. What what does spring training actually mean? Who who? who who knows? It all depends right. on what he does during the regular season. But uh, those uh, those those numbers for Spencer Torkelson in spring training were certainly a little bit alarming. But hey, there's documented evidence of him having a 30 home run 90 right. RBI it, year it, last it's, year. It's it's time to sign off because I'm getting uh, from El Gato, who's the rookie they drafted. That was Max Clark, and then Ken said, "Bring Max Clark up." Okay, yeah, it's no, time to disagree. Yeah. Dude's years like 18. Old. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's going to be a couple gonna years. He's going to be a fucking dog, though, when yeah. he's ready. I'll tell you that. He's got the swag. I'll, I'll give him that. that. He looked like your future star, Dude's man. Dude's got aura, and he is a five-tool player. Yep. Like, got the swag. When's the last time the Tigers had a legit five-tool player? Yeah, they... I was told that's what Riley Green is. Uh, yeah. 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 He can be. That's fair. That's but what I was told. The sixth tool is health, and we haven't seen that yet, so... Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Uh, we have a guest in studio, too. Motor Ooh. City Rockers. They're starting the playoffs. Hey. Hey. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk to them, see what's up for their playoff run. Uh, Thursday, Trevor James, Detroit City FC. Hey. Hey. We'll come Shout in studio. Out. Hell yeah. So we'll we'll talk some Detroit well, City. Yeah, to go please. To the PCFC games soon too. I can't wait. Man. Absolutely. PCFC let me know. Games are lit. Yeah. Let I'm me know. To go. All right, everybody. We'll be back at it tomorrow for Sam Flannel, KG, Spencer Raxter. I'm Neil Rule. Thanks for tapping into Big D Energy. Well, see you later.